Audiobook title. Reborn as a Lizard Evolve. Cultivate. Become a Dragon. 0 1 109. By July Yong Part 03. He immediately took action, but he did not know what it was made of. Hard and seemed to be firmly combined with the inner wall of the volcano. No matter what methods Brandon used, or failed to pry up even a piece of debris from above. Brandon couldn't help but sigh slightly. The most painful thing in a dragon's life was to meet a treasure but not be able to take it for himself. He began to hang his head a bit. Even the joy of his recent advancement washed away. However, immediately thinking that this territory appeared to be his own, and placing it here was like placing it in his own home, Brandon's mood couldn't help but be soothed again. He rushed out of the lava with a happy mood, and a mouthful of red flames erupted from his oral orifice. The fire here was just a bit too much, so much so that it was not possible to avoid spitting some fire all over his own body. Standing on the rock at the mouth of the fire, Brandon surveyed himself. He realized that he had grown a lot more, but Brandon was not surprised by such things anymore. In his current form, his whole body had grown 15 meters long, and his dragon horn seemed to have grown a lot more all of a sudden. The horn that was only a dozen or so centimeters in the past was actually more than half a meter long now, and the dragon horn was very sharp and in the shape of a spiral. It seemed to be densely engraved with mysterious patterns. As the hardest part of the entire body, the dragon horn was also one of the powerful weapons of any dragon. Brandon glanced back at the volcanic lava. He still didn't know when Chilin would come out. It's better to go back to the subdragon's lair first, and I don't know how long I've been practicing. Skylar doesn't know how it's going. Brandon planned to make a trip to Snake Valley recently, and those flame fruits would help Vajra and the five serpents in their cultivation. Chapter 73 New Magic Brandon made a gentle leap at the top of the volcano and his huge fleshy wings quickly opened up with a slight flap. The body suddenly swooped towards the top of the mountain. As his strength grew, his mindset also began to slightly change. From the fear of being discovered by humans and being cautious in every way, to the current one of trying to avoid human conflict as much as possible, but not being afraid of humans. Just the mentality that if people wouldn't offend him, he wouldn't hurt them. This was the benefit of increased strength. Although Brandon himself had not yet noticed, the fact that he, who had never been cautious, actually opened his wings and flew towards the sky was evident. He thought he was strong enough to not have to fear humans. How fast Brandon flew, and within a few minutes, he was at Aragon's lair. Aragon was outside the cave, battered and bruised, and was gnawing down on an unknown creature. Seeing that a shadow seemed to appear in the sky, he couldn't help but look up. A second later, he respectfully lay down on the ground its head pressed tightly against the ground, not moving a muscle. Branded circled around and finally landed on the ground, giving rise to a sudden cloud of sand and dust. He closed his wings, his body crawled towards the nest, and he glanced at the small Aragon. Suddenly its body crouched even lower. Brandon walked into the nest. Skylar was in the cave board and combing her wings. He was finally relieved to see that Skylar was safe. Skylar was surprised to see Brandon's huge body for a moment, then reacted instantly and swished onto Brandon's back. She chirped. She recounted the thrilling events of the last few days. Thankfully, it was all just thrilling. Moreover, Brandon noticed that her eyes flashed with essence from time to time when she was talking, and it seemed that her strength had greatly improved. Brandon learned that it had been five days since he left the lair. However, Brandon didn't feel anything strange about this matter. When he was a human in his previous life, the old monk had once said that when the inner strength was cultivated to the innate realm, a person's lifespan would be greatly increased, and the requirements for diet would also decrease. In this state of deep meditation, one could often cultivate for a few days at a time, and would not feel hungry. After Skylar had finished recounting the events of the past few days, Brandon realized that it was already evening outside. Not feeling hungry, he lay down on his nest and began to recall the memories in his mind. He realized that since the last few fights, his magic was becoming less and less helpful in his fights, and seemed a bit implausible. The magic he had learned at the beginning were all relatively low level, and as his strength increased, their power had all increased to a certain extent, but the degree of improvement was not significant. Because the foes he had encountered before were all relatively weak in strength, he was able to use it on them without fail. But after the battles with the giant crocodile and the volcano beast, he found that his magic was quite powerless against opponents who were a little bit stronger than him or were at the same level of strength, 
except for a gravity spell that was still somewhat effective. Both the inherited memories and divine soul memories clearly showed that the killing power of magic was definitely greater than that of other professionals of the same level. It seemed like he had an empty treasure trove, but didn't know how to use it. He plopped down on the ground and began to flip through his memories. An entire night passed. Early the next morning, Brandon opened his eyes and hurriedly ran outside, eager to test out the magic he found last night. There were a total of six magic spells found this time, three in the fire system and three in the earth system, all of which were magic spells that Brandon could use at this stage. Among the earth-type ones were Earth Golem, Earth Cracking Spell, and Ranged Gravity Spell. The fire-type ones were Fire Elemental, Fire Rain Spell, and Blaze Spell. Brandon found a relatively empty place and began to test them one by one. The routes of these magic spells were obviously much more complicated than the magic spells he had previously learned. Moreover, the consumption of spiritual energy had steeply increased by almost double. Brandon failed a few times and slowly navigated the pathway of magic. Brandon's spiritual energy smoothly carved out the magic route, while a surge of energy was extracted from his body. A strong wave of energy immediately appeared in the void. He quickly struck this wave on the ground. As if something happened on the ground, it suddenly rolled violently and the dirt bubbled up like boiling water. At that moment, a bare head emerged from the ground, and his body quickly grew taller and taller. A few seconds later, an earth golem that was nearly over 10 meters tall was suddenly formed. Its entire body seemed to be composed of dirt, making it impossible to differentiate its generic appearance from any other rock. Its body was incomparably thick, and at a glance, one could tell that it had a strong defensive ability. The earth golem did not move at all, as if it had no intelligence. Since the earth golem was formed, Brandon seemed to have a marvelous spiritual connection with it, as if he could command its actions. Brandon looked at the huge earth golem and was curious in his heart to try out its power and couldn't help but send him a command to destroy the huge tree in front of him. The giant earth golem moved at once. Its speed appeared to be very slow, but with its huge height, it was definitely faster than a person running. The earth golem slowly walked towards the giant tree, its enormous weight causing the ground to gently shake. This was a giant tree with a diameter of 6 meters and a height of 40 to 50 meters, Although the earth golem was tall, it looked a bit short in front of the giant tree. After a few seconds, the earth golem finally walked in front of the giant tree. The earth-colored giant fist violently smashed towards the giant tree. Boom, boom, boom. The fist that was as huge as a round table struck the giant tree, and wood shavings immediately flew across the ground, and the giant tree shook violently. The earth golem seemed to know no fatigue, smashing on the giant tree with a fixed frequency. Although the earth golem was moving slowly, the more it attacked the slower it was. After two minutes, this giant tree with a diameter of six meters collapsed with a bang. Although it hadn't gone through actual combat, Brandon was quite satisfied with the strength of the earth golem, but of course it would be even better if it was a bit faster. If he was to face the giant crocodile again, he only needed to send an earth golem, and there was no need for him to go into battle bare-chested. Brandon dispersed the earth golem and the huge earth golem suddenly collapsed into a pile of small mountain-like earth blocks. The existence of the earth golem would continuously consume his mental energy, but of course this consumption was very small. Brandon felt that he had enough to support half a day of such consumption. Next, Brandon experimented with the ranged gravity technique, earth cracking technique. The scope gravity technique was an upgraded version of the gravity technique in which a gravity field with a diameter of 50 meters was formed with himself as the center of the circle. With Brandon's current strength, he was already able to form a field with seven times the gravity. Brandon believed that once his enemies got close to him, he would be able to make it difficult for them to move an inch. Earth cracking magic was the sudden formation of a five meter wide crack in the ground, which quickly closed up again after a few seconds. Brandon didn't like this spell much as the preparation time was not only too long, but also, it wasn't very powerful. In contrast, he still preferred the equivalent of the split earth golem and the status magic gravity. After all, what he was most proud of was not the power of the magic, but his own physical strength. Simply put, his favorite thing was still physical combat. Brandon also wanted to experiment with fire magic, but realized that he had very little mental chi left. Not only did these magic spells take longer to prepare, but they also consumed a staggering amount of mental energy. Overall though, Brandon was still very satisfied. Chapter 74, 
unwelcome guests. Brandon ran back to the nest dizzily and began to meditate. After a few hours, his spiritual energy began to overflow again and there was a slight increase. Brandon hurriedly climbed back to the original test site and began to test the fire magic. Intense energy fluctuations formed in the void. A faint red light appeared in the air. The red light was getting bigger and denser. A few seconds later, a giant covered in flames stood on the ground. It emitted high temperatures. The grass around it quickly turned yellow, and it didn't take long for it to burn up. This flame giant was over 8 meters tall. Its entire body seemed to be composed of flames, and it was impossible to see its exact face. Brandon didn't bother to test its specific power, because just those flames on his body alone possessed a powerful killing power. Brandon dispersed the flame giant with satisfaction. Next, he tested the fire rain spell. Spiritual power smoothly carved along the magic route. The entire heaven and earth seemed to have caused a resonance. The sky suddenly drifted a burst of red clouds. The red clouds became more and more dense. The entire heaven and earth suddenly became hot and dry. Brandon felt a burst of depression. Suddenly the red clouds in the sky brightened violently. The red clouds contracted violently, forming a piece of fiery red orb. The fiery red orb quickly landed, getting bigger and bigger. This is a piece of magic all made up of fireballs the size of a basin. The magic landed on the ground, and the ground felt like it was carpet bombed. The loud ringing sound suddenly shook his ears. After a burst of smoke, Brandon took a look at the place that had been bombarded, and his mouth suddenly opened wide. A hundred meters in circumference seemed to have been plowed, and the entire ground was plunged more than a meter deep, with dirt tumbling inside and curling smoke. This power was almost as powerful as a missile. Looking at the power of this fire rain art, Brandon fixed his mind, calmed his spirit, and began to test the flame art. The flame technique was similar to the rain of fire technique, but one landed from the sky, while the other caused the ground to burn, and both had a range of 100 meters. The entire area was ablaze with flames, which lasted for 15 seconds before disappearing automatically. After seeing the power of the fire rain spell, Brandon was obviously prepared for the reaction to the blaze spell and did not make any exaggerated reactions. Just as Brandon was experimenting with magic on the island, a group of personnel dressed in linen and rough clothes were setting off into the jungle. They were dressed in ancient clothes and each of them carried a huge sword on their backs, and the one at the head of the group was that beggar from the London subway station. He had now changed into a clean gray linen robe, his long hair was tied casually at the back and his turquoise blue eyes seemed to contain infinite wisdom. At this time, a middle-aged man who looked to be in his forties stealthily and quickly took a few steps forward and said with a respectful tone, Elder Kevin, according to the intelligence, the giant dragon was flying towards the seashore at that time. And right now the military of the country you has already allocated 20% of its satellite resources to keep an all-out eye on the giant dragon, but it seems as if the giant dragon has disappeared in the sea. So why are we even here? Do you think the gargoyle will be here? Oh, Deacon, are you doubting my decision? Kevin suddenly stopped advancing. His turquoise blue eyes stared at Deacon Wright tightly, and a vast aura suddenly enveloped Deacon Wright. Bean-sized drops of sweat couldn't stop flowing down his face. I wouldn't dare. It's just that my subordinate has a question in his mind. Please, Elder Kevin, solve my confusion. Wright couldn't care about the sweat on his face and said in a deep voice, Hemph! Ascetic Kevin grunted and continued, you don't need to be upset with me either. I have little interest in power in the church. This time, if it wasn't for the Pope's summons, I wouldn't have returned. So it's better to put away those little witticisms of yours. Kevin crossed his eyes and continued. According to the canonical books, the giant dragon is particularly attached to the nest where he was born. And if it's general, he won't easily change the nest. And one day, he will still come back. It's better for us to wait for it in the nest than to search aimlessly. At this time, a young cultivator spoke out and said, Elder Kevin, I wonder how long we have to wait. If the giant dragon never comes back, do we have to keep waiting as well? Kevin glanced at the cultivators whose faces suddenly became ugly and couldn't help but sigh softly. The current ecclesiastical order was already getting worse and worse. The young people nowadays were greedy for enjoyment. They really couldn't stand any bit of suffering. The profession of ascetic monk now existed in name only. Kevin was a bit disillusioned and waved his hand. If you can't stand it at that time, just go back by yourself. The entire group fell into silence. No one wanted to make a sound. Everyone walked quietly, and the atmosphere was very depressing. Ah, there's a snake. 
A young girl's scream instantly broke the calm of the group. A young cleric drew out his huge sword, and with a flash of cold light, he instantly chopped a two-meter-long cobra into two pieces. The entire group was lively again, everyone talking to each other in low voices. Kevin said in a deep voice, From now on, everyone should be careful. From the intelligence, there are very many snakes in this area. I don't want a large portion of us here to have to quit before we even get to the dragon's den. The last time a few major mercenary corps went on an expedition over here, they were all wiped out. So don't take it lightly just because there are no dragons here. Yes, Elder. Everyone said in unison. That young girl cultivator probably felt that she would be safer next to the Elder, and hurriedly ran next to growing up and said in a brittle voice, Elder, do you think we can defeat the giant dragon? Elder Kevin looked a bit hesitant and after thinking for a while, he said to her, Dragons are a magical creature, and in myths and legends, very strong, and the powerful ones can even wipe out whole continents. Kevin paused and continued. But according to the U.S. military, a few air-to-air -air missiles can cause it to suffer serious injuries, it should still be underage, and its strength is about the same as mine. Together with a few of you, it should be fine. Besides, we're not here to slay dragons, we're here to negotiate with the dragon. Then can the giant dragon understand us? The young cultivator said curiously. Elder Kevin couldn't help but laugh at that. What do you think a giant dragon is? A kind of brute beast with empty power? Nah. A dragon is a highly intelligent creature that naturally understands any language. So don't be surprised if you hear a dragon spit out human words. Also the etiquette of worshipping the dragon you should not forget. The dragon is a noble creature. Don't let it look down on us humans. Chapter 75 Off the Island In a basement in Country U, where the place was brightly lit, a group of staff wearing white overalls walked back and forth, their footsteps hurried, appearing very busy. This was a huge biological laboratory. On both sides of the corridor, there were two huge glass containers, and inside the containers were stored all kinds of biological specimens. At first glance, it was as if they were alive. The air was filled with a heavy smell of formalin. The specimens of a wide range of species, there were human beings, there were animals, and even aliens, all sorts of oddly shaped creatures that could give someone the creeps. A young assistant hurried down the corridor, a file in his hand, towards a room in front of him. He didn't even knock on the door and just pushed it open, because he knew that even if he knocked as hard as he wanted to, the people inside wouldn't hear him. The room was large, filled with test tubes, and all sorts of advanced equipment. An old man with white hair was staring at a test tube placed in one of the equipment with a crazy face, and from time to time, his hands danced around, as if he was imagining something. Doctor, this is the analysis report of the giant dragon's blood. The young assistant was obviously a bit scared and said softly, Ha ha ha, put it here, let's see. What a marvelous creature. This is truly God's work. The cells are actually able to divide indefinitely under sufficient energy. Do you know what that means? Without waiting for the assistant to answer, the doctor exclaimed. It's immortality. The doctor's hands waved in the sky. Nervousness fell on the assistant's face like rain. The poor assistant didn't dare to breathe a single breath, nodding his head continuously. Yes, 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 doctor. I think you'll definitely win the Nobel Prize if this research breaks through. No, no, you'll be as great a scientist as Einstein or Newton. A crazy laugh came from inside and all the assistants in the basement, silenced, became quicker on their feet. In a wide office, the wall was covered with dense metals. A middle-aged man was walking around inside, looking very anxious. Suddenly a knock came from the doorway. The middle-aged man stopped in his tracks, sat down in front of his desk, and said, Come in. The door gently pushed open, and a blonde woman holding a folder walked in. When the middle-aged man saw her come in, his expression instantly eased over rubbed his eyebrows, and said softly, Still no sign of that dragon? The president's office has been pushing me very hard lately, and many of the department's idiots have already begun to be dissatisfied with me. Saying that I'm taking up too many resources without the slightest achievement. These guys who only know profit. There's also that group of people who don't know what they're talking about, actually shouting slogans to protect the dragons. Not yet, sir. It flew to the Bermuda region, and as you know, a lot of equipment is simply useless when it gets there, but we firmly lock down the area, and once the gargoyle comes out, it definitely won't be able to escape the satellites overhead. Forget about those worries, would you like me to give you a massage? The blonde woman said in a charming voice. The entire office was suddenly ambiguous. 
Brandon finished experimenting with his magic, and with a smug smile on his face, he returned to the cave satisfied. At this time it was already close to evening, Skylar didn't know where he had gone and hadn't come back yet. Brandon had nothing to do, and decided to go over to the volcano to pick some flame fruits. He planned to go to Snake Valley as soon as it was light tomorrow. He hadn't seen Kong for so many days, and he still missed them. Thinking of this, Brandon climbed out of the cave and leapt towards the air, his huge body flying towards the volcano. The leaves of the red giant tree were very large, with a diameter of a meter and a half, and with a high temperature, of course, this temperature did not affect the dragon. Brandon gently flew up, picked a leaf. The leaves were tough, not easy to pluck. The leaf was in the shape of a maple leaf. Inside, the veins were clear, just like flowing blood vessels. It looked very nice. Brandon picked a couple hundred or so flame fruits and wrapped them in a few leaves. Although it looked like a lot, it was obviously like a few small carry bags under Brandon's huge claws. He grabbed a few of the packages and flew towards the cave. He would be leaving tomorrow, so he had to get everything ready today. Shortly after returning to the cave, Skylar came flying from a distance, grabbing a huge creature. She looked very strained. Her body was going high and low, but she clearly didn't want to give up on this prey. Desperately, she flapped her wings and headed this way. A few seconds later, Skylar and her prey landed heavily on the ground. It was a creature that looked like a pig, but was clearly much larger, with a small, sharp horn growing from the top of its head, which seemed odd. Brandon walked up to it and looked at it, and a small hole appeared in the boar's head. There was no telling what Skylar had used to kill her. Brandon wasn't hungry, but if there was food to be had, he liked it very much. He ran to the lake in front of the cave, cleaned the strange pig, and started grilling it. Halfway through, he gave Skylar a flame fruit and told her to eat it and then close her eyes and tune up. By the time Brandon finished the food, Skylar had opened her eyes. She kept on grunting, and Brandon knew that the flame fruit was working for her, and that her strength had improved again. The next morning, Brandon opened his eyes and started to get busy. There was actually nothing to organize. Brandon, a huge dragon, was really too poor. He grasped the bead firmly in his hand and put him together in the package of flame fruits. He left a few flame fruits for the little Aragon. In addition, he instructed him not to eat them all at once but to eat one every few days, and the little subdragon kept nodding his head as he listened. If the little Aaron ate these fruits, his strength should go up a level. Then self-preservation would not be a problem. After explaining all this, Brandon grabbed the package of flame fruits, his huge body walked out of the nest, called out to Skylar, and with a flap of his fleshy wings, his body suddenly flew towards the sky. The higher he flew, the faster he got and he couldn't help but look behind him as the island grew smaller and smaller. Gradually it could no longer be seen. Brandon couldn't help but let out a dragon's roar. The metallic dragon's roar echoed in the air for a long time. Chapter 76 The Dragon's Wrath I. In a huge communication hall, the staff inside were busy when suddenly a large computer sounded an alarm. Huge target found in designated area. Huge target found in designated area. The mechanical voice kept making noise and all the personnel were suddenly excited. Quickly, pull up the satellite image, lock onto the target, and report the location. A man with a beer belly said loudly. All the personnel acted quickly at once. Oh my god, it's really that giant dragon, and there's a green-colored giant bird next to it, a young staff member exclaimed. Location at triple X dot, triple X. Target locked, another staff member said. Get General Brown on the phone, the man ordered. Within moments, the call was connected. General Brown picked up the phone. Sir, the target has been spotted. The location is triple X dot triple X. Brandon grabbed the package and flew through the sky, his huge wings flicking as his body shot ahead like an arrow. White clouds tumbled below him, and the warm sunlight shone on Brandon's purple golden scaled armor, reflecting a dazzling light. He felt cozy. He was oblivious to the fact that the human army was slowly approaching. With Brandon's current length of nearly 15 meters, he was already considered a behemoth on Earth. His huge fleshy wings flapped gently. His speed was now comparable to Skylar's, but Skylar didn't fly. She stood on Brandon's back, wide and seemingly smooth, her claws firmly gripping Brandon's massive scale armor. Her eyes narrowed slightly, and she let out a pleasant chirp from time to time. Suddenly, Brandon felt an uneasy aura coming from afar, and his body stopped in a flash. The huge body hovered high in the air, 
looking towards the distance. Not long after, on the horizon in the distance, a few dots appeared. The dots grew bigger and bigger until suddenly a huge fleet appeared in front of Brandon's eyes. Seven or eight huge ships embraced an aircraft carrier, riding the winds and waves, sailing in his direction. Brandon's eyes narrowed slightly. A fierce light erupted from his eyes. Do they really want to kill everything? This time, Brandon was really angry. Brandon handed the package to Skylar, who was feeling strange, and told her to go back first. He would be right back. Although Skylar was puzzled, she still obeyed Brandon. She grabbed the package and quickly flew ahead. Skylar quickly flew over the fleet. The fleet didn't attack. It seemed they were aiming for Brandon. Brandon was finally relieved. As long as they dealt with him, that was fine. The fleet was getting closer and closer to the dragon when suddenly the fleet's gun barrels adjusted. The huge barrels shone with a cold metallic light and moved from side to side. Brandon felt his heart skip a beat when he was suddenly targeted by so many gun barrels. A dozen fighters suddenly took off from the carriers and flew towards Brandon's side. As if the fleet suddenly received some message, they opened fire. Brandon heard a roar from the giant ship, and what looked like a rainbow of ammunition interspersed with a few missiles suddenly shot towards him. Brandon added a shield to himself. The energy in his body quickly ran, his fleshy wings flapped gently, and his flexible body quickly navigated through the barrage of ammunition. Brandon saw several missiles plunge past his side. He could even feel the temperature of the missile tail flames. Brandon was in a state of shock. With countless ammunition flying towards him, Brandon's flexible body evaded rapidly. At the same time, he quickly carved a region of increased gravity with his spiritual power. As a result, their speed had become a lot slower. But this couldn't solve the problem entirely. The sky seemed to be covered by ammunition. No matter where Brandon flew, the cannon fire roared in that direction. At this time, his huge body had become a burden. It wasn't long before Brandon's body was hit many times. But luckily the hits were not very powerful, causing only external wounds. Brandon grunted, his heart filled with anger. Energy raced through his body. His wings snapped, and he moved even faster. Brandon's mental power was rapidly carved. His body moved nimbly, and his sharply increased speed made it difficult for the cannon fire to lock onto him at all. Not long after, a red cloud suddenly floated in the sky. The red cloud grew thicker and thicker until it violently contracted, and a fireball fell from the sky. It landed on top of a huge ship. The giant ship lurched and let out an explosive sound. Although it didn't destroy the giant ship, it did render part of the ship's weapons instantly mute. Brandon saw the effectiveness of the fire rain spell, but it was too late to cast another one. More artillery fire whistled towards him. Brandon hurriedly flew into the distance. Fighting head-on with the fleet was clearly a fool's errand. The fighters hovering in the distance saw that the dragon was trying to escape and hurriedly fired missiles to intercept him, while more and more airplanes took off and rushed towards him. Huge earth spears quickly condensed in the air and shot towards the incoming missiles. With a loud boom, a missile approaching Brandon exploded in the air. Brandon sidestepped and dodged a few others. Before the other fighters could react, Brandon had already broken through. More missiles flew towards him, but with his speed, he easily dodged a few, and the others missed completely. The dragon was getting further and further away from them, gradually disappearing into the distance. Brandon desperately flew ahead, gradually leaving the fighters behind until he could no longer see them. He felt relieved. He was feeling the pain of his wounds, which made him angrier and angrier. The human's relentless pursuit had completely pushed Brandon to the edge. The anger in his heart grew stronger and stronger. Determined to teach those self-righteous humans a lesson, he immediately reversed his direction and flew back. His pale golden eyes were already vaguely red. He was determined to make the humans pay for what they had done. Brandon flew through the clouds towards low altitude. The clouds in the sky were very thick, and the satellites couldn't lock onto Brandon's whereabouts at all. Brandon's huge fleshy wings flapped gently, and the calm sea surface suddenly became choppy. Gradually, he was getting closer and closer to the coast, and he could even see the city on the coast, the towering buildings, and the people having fun on the beach. These were all things that Brandon had been familiar with in his previous life, though they were now a gradual blur. Great anger had washed away his sanity, and great strength had bolstered his confidence. He desperately needed revenge now. He wanted to let the humans know that the dragon's wrath was not so easy to bear. 
and that the humans should pay for what they had done. Chapter 77 The Dragon's Wrath 2 This chapter provides some explanation about Chida. It was noon at this time, and Alice was taking an art class at school. Today, the art teacher told everyone to draw one of their favorite animals, and Alice, without knowing why, chose the dragon. The dragon on the white paper was gradually completed, purple and gold scale armor, huge wings, sharp claws, the dragon was spitting fire. It looked very cute. The dragon had a wreath on its head, and a little girl was sitting on its back, looking very happy. Alice looked at the picture, and couldn't help but giggle, and a chubby girl at the same table couldn't help but look over curiously. She immediately exclaimed as soon as she saw the picture, Alice, is that a drawing of a giant dragon? Why is it wearing a wreath on its head? It's not scary at all. Look at what I drew. Alice looked over, and it turned out that what her classmate drew was also a dragon. It had a hideous image and was spitting fire at the crowd. The tanks around them kept charging towards the dragon, but they were all easily overturned by the dragon. Many buildings had collapsed, and the whole city was filled with smoke. Oh, Janine, the giant dragon is not as bad as you drew it, and you didn't make it look good at all. Oomph. Isn't that what they all say in the manga? That one day he'll turn against the humans because they've been trying to hunt him down, but he's gotten away with it several times. Janine, how do you know about such things? I heard about it when mom and dad were talking. I heard that this dragon hasn't reached adulthood yet, and if it does, no weapon in the world will be able to deal with it. No wonder, every time the dragon appears in the newspaper, it's a little bigger than the last time. On the beach by the sea, there were beach chairs everywhere, filled with people sunbathing on them, and some scarcely dressed ladies walking around. It immediately attracted countless eyeballs. Oh, OMG. I think I've met my goddess, Bob. What do you think of this chick? Look at this body. Sheesh. Bob. Bob. What are you looking at? What's there to see at sea? He turned to his companion and saw that he had been staring at the sea with a serious look. Look. What's that? Oh. My god. Oh my god. It's the dragon. It's coming this way. A dark shadow flew from the sea level, growing larger and larger. Bob suddenly stood up from his beach chair in panic and shouted. A 15-meter-long giant dragon flew towards this side with its huge fleshy wings spread out. Its huge body with a compelling aura made people feel breathless, and the sky seemed to be suddenly cloudy. The people playing on the beach suddenly quieted down, as if they had been hit by magic. They looked terrified. Their bodies did not move, their eyes staring tightly at the dragon that was getting bigger and bigger. At that moment, the dragon let out a loud roar and a stream of hot flames came out of its mouth, spraying towards the beach. The beach immediately issued a series of screams. The crowd panicked and began to flee in all directions. A few unlucky guys were hit by the dragon's dragon breath. A few seconds later, they suddenly turned into ashes. The dragon circled around the beach, and its huge body flew towards the city. A huge, steel city towered over the coast. This side of the city was filled with tall buildings and traffic, pedestrians on the road, in a hurry, and countless cars traveling on the road. Huge billboards were everywhere. This a developed city. Suddenly the sun in the sky seemed to be covered by a shadow, suddenly gloomy. The pedestrians on the road couldn't help but look towards the sky. They suddenly let out a terrible scream, screaming as if it was contagious. In a moment, the whole city was suddenly noisy. Traffic was jammed. Crowds of people ran frantically in the streets. Suddenly the wide road, violent surge, Solid concrete steel fine paved road like boiling water boiling up. Not long after, a huge head suddenly revealed itself from the middle of the road. It was like a devil crawling out from the ground. Its body slowly drilled out from the middle of the road. It was getting bigger and bigger and taller and taller. A few seconds later, a 10-meter tall earth-colored giant stood in the middle of the city all of a sudden. It stopped for a while, and its body began to move, and its body, which was 10 meters tall, stepped forward like a front, and the cars in front of it were like toys. They were either knocked away by it, or flattened by its giant feet. The huge body stepped on the solid road surface. The road surface continuously cracked. The whole city felt like it was trembling. Not long after, he walked up to a building, and his huge, earth-colored fist smashed towards it. The glass of the building shattered one after another, and the fist slammed into the building with a loud ringing sound that made people's hearts tremble. Tiny cracks slowly appeared on the building. The several hundred meter high building could not help but shake. Several police cars whooshed and stopped far away from the side. A dozen police officers quickly got out of the car, 
they picked up their guns and shot at the yellow giant. But the bullets hitting the giant's body didn't have any effect at all other than adding some weight to it. The yellow giant, as if tireless, with a fixed frequency, towards the building smashed. Gradually the building had been smashed open by its big mouth, shaking more and more. Thin cracks slowly densely covered the entire high-rise. The crowd of the building panicked and ran out from the building. Let them be thankful that the giant did not care about them. It seems to be only interested in smashing the building. The giant dragon's huge body finally landed in the middle of the city, its huge tail waving from side to side in the air. A huge bus, swept by its tail, suddenly flew up, heavily smashed into the building next to it. The entire city's traffic came to a standstill. Countless cars, frantically honking their horns, crowds of people desperately running wildly underneath the dragon's feet. They screamed frantically, but in the dragon's ears, it was as if these sounds were coming from far away. It was as if it was like a world away. The giant dragon lifted its feet and stepped forward, and many of the people who couldn't dodge in time were instantly trampled by the giant dragon. Spiritual energy was quickly carved. The ground of a tall building quickly cracked open with a crack more than five meters wide. The entire tall building instantly made a crisp clicking sound. A few seconds later, the building collapsed with a bang, and smoke rose up to the sky. Every few steps, it spit dragon breath. High temperature flames immediately make the nearby buildings, burning up. Not long after the whole city was suddenly red, countless people cried out and fled everywhere. Suddenly the ground began to shake in the distance, and a kind of machine roar came from afar. Helicopters also began to appear in the sky, and the human army finally reacted. The giant dragon stopped, its huge dragon head looked into the distance, its fiery red eyes shot out a rich red light. A huge anger had washed over his brain. Its mental power quickly carved out, and a ranged gravity spell instantly formed around its body. Its body gently leapt up and began to fly at a low altitude. Its huge, fleshy wings, gulping purple-golden energy, were as sharp as razor blades, and any object that was touched was sliced in two, and the tall buildings next to it were constantly being carried by the fleshy wings, with deep scratches appearing. Its body did not retreat but advanced, rushing towards the army in front. The helicopters in front of them suddenly opened fire, dense small missiles hitting towards the giant dragon. But when they reached the dragon's body, they suddenly lurched and fell downward. Under the dragon's body, smoke filled the air, and the huge impact made the dragon's body start to shake. The dragon and the army were getting closer and closer. The tank in front of them shook violently and began to spew out fury, a large number of shells surging towards the dragon. The giant dragon's body immediately began to appear a patch of blood, but these were only superficial wounds and didn't hurt the root at all. The giant dragon let out an angry hole in pain. Its wings flapped violently, and its speed became even faster. It stretched out its huge claws and grabbed towards the tank, the huge tank, in the claws of the giant dragon was like a child's toy. It casually remained. The tank was instantly smashed into the nearby building by it, and a series of huge explosions came from the distance. The giant dragon was shaken. Its huge body was hit by several small missiles, and a small hole appeared in its body. It was covered in huge pain. It roared angrily and opened its hideous mouth to spew flames into the sky, and a helicopter burst into flames. Immediately after that, one earth spear after another shot towards the sky, and the helicopter exploded one after another. The densely packed howitzers splattered blood on the giant dragon's body. Gradually, the giant dragon began to have scales flying across its body, and its flesh and blood were blurred. Although it didn't hurt its lungs, it still caused it to be in severe pain. It let out a furious hole and charged towards the tank, its huge tail sweeping left and right, the tank was struck by a huge force and immediately flew out. Immediately after, red-hot flames from the giant mouth sprayed out directly to the tank burned red. But more and more troops were coming this way, and there were more and more helicopters in the sky. A faint trace of fear flashed in its eyes, and he opened his wings and fled towards the sky. But before he could fly far, dense ammunition flew from the sky. It immediately hit the giant dragon and the huge explosion directly blew its mind blank, and its body fell towards the bottom out of control. Below was a school. At this time, the school teacher has long instructed the students to hide inside the classroom and to not go out. The school seems very quiet. Outside, the huge sound of explosions continue to come. The students hide in the classroom, look terrified, 
shivering. Suddenly a loud bang came from outside, and the ground shook slightly. It seemed as if something huge had suddenly fallen outside the classroom. Alice, pushing open the door, looked outside. She couldn't help but widen her eyes. A huge dragon, covered in blood, was lying on the square in front of her. The marble-paved square was smashed into a huge crater by it. It looked like it had suffered serious injuries. Its original purple-golden scale armor flopped everywhere, and blood gradually stained the ground red. Alice seemed to be obsessed, step by step towards the dragon. The huge body of the dragon looked particularly hideous. The more Alice walked in, the more she felt it was difficult to breathe, and a kind of panic arose in her heart. Gradually she walked to the side of the giant dragon. Suddenly, the giant dragon suddenly moved, eyelids brushed open, fiery red giant eyes, staring tightly at this small person. The body slowly climbed up, nostrils began to emit sparks. The mouth opened slightly. Alice was terrified, and she felt a strong scent of sulfur hit her. She stared blankly at the gargoyle. Weakly, she asked, May I ask if you are Mr. Dragon? The dragon visibly froze for a moment and looked at the little girl. The red light in his eyes faded and clarity began to return to his eyes. He shook his huge head. A white breath came out of his mouth. Oh, little human girl, aren't you afraid of me? Afraid. But I don't think you will hurt me. Can you take me flying? Ha ha ha. Brandon couldn't help but laugh, looking at the little girl with complicated eyes. Another time, if I get the chance, I'll take you flying. But for now I'm leaving. The sound of helicopters rattling in the distance. The human army getting closer. He couldn't delay any longer. If he went any further, his entire body might be accounted for here. Little human girl, goodbye then. I hope to have another chance to see you again. He staggered to his feet, his head spinning. He realized that his spiritual energy had been severely depleted. He checked his body. Although he was a bloody mess, they were all superficial wounds, and although they looked serious, there was nothing at all going on inside him. He transported the energy in his body. He immediately felt terrifying power flowing through his body, and he glanced at the helicopter in the distance, revealing a look of contempt. His body gently leapt, and his huge fleshy wings, bristling, unfolded. He flew rapidly towards the low altitude. He nimbly weaved through the steel jungle. The helicopters couldn't aim at all. After ten minutes, Brandon finally crossed the city and flew towards the sea. The army had been left far behind. He glanced back at the smoke-filled city with a complicated look. Being a human in his previous life had caused him to report very mixed feelings towards humans, feeling both closeness and fear. His own great destruction in the city made him regret it a bit slightly. Perhaps the civilians in the city were innocent, Brandon sighed slightly. At this time, seven huge missiles whistled and flew from the distance. These missiles, which were seven or eight meters long, were very fast and the distance between them and the dragon kept drawing closer. Brandon heard a loud noise and couldn't help but turn around. His eyes couldn't help but protrude out. His wings flapped desperately, speeding up further. But these missiles had already vaguely surrounded him. Brandon suddenly calmed down at this time. His spiritual power rapidly carved. Earth spears continuously condensed in the void at a speed close to instantaneous and huge earth spears were shot towards the missiles one after another. With a loud boom, a huge explosion instantly detonated the surrounding missiles in a chain, and a huge mushroom cloud instantly appeared in the sky. A powerful shockwave shot towards Brandon with extreme speed. Brandon's huge body was like a grass in a gale. His body involuntarily shot towards the distance. The body was struck by the powerful shockwave and was violently shaken. He couldn't help but spit out a mouthful of blood. His inner abdomen had been injured. Chapter 78 Zhao Dragon He looked back at the huge mushroom cloud in the distance, his heart palpitating. His own huge body had nothing to hide under the satellite. He staggered towards the sea. With a lurch, the huge body leapt into the sea at once. Brandon dived towards the depths. The dragon's aura was released. Some small fishes and shrimps didn't dare to come close at all. After a few minutes, Brandon dived to the bottom of the sea and the gorgeous colorfulness of the bottom of the sea, there was no time to pay attention to it at all. He got down on all fours and began to heal his wounds. In the jungle, at this point, it was clear that the team from the order that had sought out the dragon had run into trouble. On the second day of the team's advance, they realized that there were more and more snakes in the jungle. Their swords waved, and a huge snake was instantly chopped into two by them, 
and the snake's corpse kept twisting and turning, spreading over the entire path, and they didn't know how many they had killed along the way. However, these snakes seemed to be endless. A steady stream of snakes came from afar. Gradually, they were surrounded by countless snakes. The hard giant swords made of alloy had begun to roll tough, and some of the clerics were already exhausted, and the fighting chi in their bodies, which was so abundant no matter what, had gradually dried up. That young girl cleric's face was pale. She shivered and hid behind the ascetics. Her delicate face showed a look of fear. In just one day, she had seen countless types of snakes. Father Kevin, this place is just too weird. There are more and more snakes. We are already surrounded by them. If you don't make a move, we're going to be wiped out. A middle-aged cleric gasped and said. Ascetic Kevin suddenly opened his half-closed eyes with a flash of refined light inside. He swept a glance at him. Just this little level of fighting is too much for you guys to handle? I don't know how you were trained in the order. Has the long period of comfortable life already caused you to gradually degenerate? That middle-aged cultivator's face reddened as he snapped and backed away. The other cultivators didn't look too good either. After all, not having an enemy for a long time had already caused them to neglect their training. This level of fighting had left them panting and almost exhausted. The current generation of the Holy See's fighting strength was already far from what it was during its glory days. The Holy See, as the most influential and financially powerful religious organization in the world, with believers all over the world, there was simply no other force that could be his enemy. Kevin Ascetic glanced at these people, aggressive gaze, immediately let them lower their heads one by one. Only a few because they did not know Kevin's strength of the young lads, unconvinced stared at him. He couldn't help but let out a sigh. At this time, a majestic aura burst out from the pale body of Kevin's ascetic monk. The strong aura immediately made them unable to move, and they could not help but be shocked. Kevin slowly drew out the huge sword behind him. A substantial fighting chi suddenly gulped in his body. His body was like a small sun, emitting a blinding light. From afar, it looked like a heavenly god had descended. The nearby snakes seemed to sense the strong aura of danger and immediately stirred uneasily. Their snake letters continuously gulped, and their bodies began to slowly retreat. Kevin pulled out the giant sword. The giant sword appeared ordinary, the overall black and red, as if stained with blood. The hole looks like a black steel block. The steel block constantly gulped hot white energy. Kevin raised the huge sword, a random chop. Suddenly a hot white energy, out of the sword, heavy landing in the place of 10 meters, issued a violent explosion, in front of both the snake or other grass, were chopped into two sections. The nearby snakes were in an uproar and fled towards the distance, intuitively telling them that this person was very dangerous. Kevin put away his giant sword. His aura slowly disappeared and returned to the state of an ordinary old man. All of them looked at him with a shocked look, not moving a muscle. Even with Kevin's years of heart-refining cultivation, he felt a little fluttered. He couldn't help but cough, which woke these people up, but when they looked up to Elder Kevin again, their gazes were even more respectful and fervent. The group continued to move forward, and strangely enough, there wasn't a single snake on the path that followed. The large jungle seemed quiet, and the snakes, as if they had gotten some message, never attacked them again. Gradually they walked to the snake valley. The sky seemed to be covered by dark clouds, gradually gloomy. The church of the line of people, in the canyon slowly walking, who did not speak, Everyone felt things through a trace of weirdness. They walked deeper and deeper. Snakes began to appear again. The snakes here seemed to appear even more coarse. Thigh-thick giant snakes abound. Their snake letters gulping. To a group of people eyeing. Icy cold eyes exposed ferocious light. Let them not help but creep. But let them be strange. These snakes do not attack. Just look at them from afar. Suddenly they heard the sound of a waterfall coming from in front of them. And as time went by. The sound of the waterfall rattling became louder and louder. Kevin's expression suddenly became serious. He sensed several dangerous auras in front of him, making him unable to stop his whole body from being on guard. His large hand full of veins tightly gripped the hilt of his sword, and the fighting chi in his body surged secretly. The ground suddenly shook slightly, and a skyrocketing smoke slowly appeared in front of him, as if some behemoth was about to come out and a skyrocketing aura was approaching from afar. In the jungle, the sound of trees collapsing continued to emanate. They couldn't help but stop, gazing on guard. Bean-sized drops of sweat couldn't help but slide down their faces, 
their eyes tightly fixed on the front, only to see a huge orangutan and five giant snakes suddenly appear in the distance. There was also a huge green bird on the orangutan's shoulder. The huge body was like a small mountain, emitting a compelling aura. They couldn't help but face as white as paper, cold sweat couldn't help but fall from their foreheads, and in a short while, their entire shirts were already soaked. If it wasn't for the presence of Elder Kevin, they would have definitely turned around and ran. Kong and the five giant snakes ran from afar, their huge bodies rampaging across the landscape, making a mess wherever they passed. They saw the humans in front of them and stopped far away. The senses of animals were often much more powerful than humans. They clearly felt that the human in front of them exuded a dangerous aura, especially the old human, which made them very jealous. After Kong ate the flame fruit, the fighting chi in his body had advanced to the fourth layer, and his body had grown to a terrifying ten meters, and his eyes had become even more red, as if they could emit flames. The muscles of the whole body were gnarled, the skin showed a pattern of scales, and the fangs on the mouth appeared even more hideous, and the whole thing was like an evil ghost crawling out of hell. It appeared very terrifying. Those five giant snakes, the fighting chi in their bodies had also advanced to the third layer, and their huge bodies were vaguely bigger again, already more than a meter thick, and their huge bodies, coiled on the ground, were like a mountain of meat. The huge scales showed mysterious talismans, and in the sunlight, an occasional flash of bright light appeared. The flesh tumor on its head had shattered, revealing a small fiery red horn. If a Chinese Taoist priest were here, he would have shrieked. Zhao Dragon! The small fiery red horn had obviously just grown, probably only an inch long and short. It appeared crystal clear and very nice to look at. Chapter 79 Crisis Both sides vaguely confronted each other. No one dared to make a sudden move. Kevin, his fighting chi was hidden. A string of white light continuously emerged from his body. The battle was imminent. Kevin also did not expect to actually encounter a situation like this. He only came out to look for the dragon's lair. These six giant beasts exuded a compelling aura, even his own almost close to the strength of the lesser heavenly level. Also do not dare to say that can easily win. Inside their huge bodies, they contained a terrifying power. If he was hit, he didn't dare to guarantee that he would be able to remain intact. Moreover, he could sense that these giant beasts were not ordinary beasts. Their bodies contained terrifying energy, and although they were no match for him in terms of quality, in terms of quantity, they were far superior to himself. It could be seen that these beasts possessed intelligence that was not inferior to humans, otherwise, they would not be so united. Kevin gripped the giant sword tightly and slowly drew it out. A substantial energy gulped on the sword. A majestic aura emanated from the old and weak body. Kevin glanced at his companions around him. Their faces were pale and their bodies were vaguely shaking. He couldn't help but sigh. It seemed that he couldn't count on them for the next battle. Kong's expression was grave. His huge fist suddenly pounded his chest, making a loud banging sound. The muscles of his entire body bulged, and the pattern of his scales became even more pronounced. The eyes were as if they were shooting out red light. It roared and ran wildly towards the crowd. The ground shook slightly as the huge body, with a terrifying aura, lunged towards them. The group of cultivators immediately backed up in fear, shouting loudly in terror. A few even sat on their asses on the ground. Panting heavily, their faces were like paper. Kevin let out a long whistle, fighting Chi cloth body. Electricity shot out. But Kevin's originally tall body was like a baby in front of Kong. Kong raised his huge fist and whistled as he slammed it towards the ascetic. The huge fist implied the sound of wind and thunder. The fist was densely covered with energy and carried a faint fiery light, as if it had traveled through the distance of space and suddenly appeared in front of the ascetic monk. A violent gust of wind blew in his face. The bitter cultivator's movements were slightly stalled. The huge sword in his hand threw out a sword light and chopped towards the huge fist, giggling. A slight scratch appeared on Kong's fist with a sudden pain. Kong was furious. Another giant fist, descending from the sky, slammed towards the bitter monk. The bitter scholar's movements appeared to be very agile, not seeing his old age at all and his body abruptly dashed towards the other side. Kong's fist smashed into the air. The ascetic monk suddenly leapt up high, his huge sword was raised above his head, and with an explosive shout, he used all his strength to slash at Kong's chest and abdomen. Kong was unable to dodge, 
and was instantly hit by his huge sword. Even with Kong's strong body, it still left a sword mark more than two meters long. A trace of blood faintly flowed out from the wound. The ascetic monk did not think that the defense of Kong was actually so strong. His own full strength of the sword actually could only break through the skin of Kong. At this time, it was too late to think. A violent gale, blowing from the side, Kong's huge fist was getting bigger and bigger. Bitter monk's body was still in the air. Simply couldn't dodge, he shouted. Puffed up his whole body fighting Chi. A strong white light suddenly formed in the body. He raised the huge sword toward Kong. Boom! With a loud bang, the ascetic monk, even with his sword, was sent flying by Kong's huge fist. His body smashed heavily into the earth like a meteorite landing. The ground shook, and after a burst of smoke, a deep pit appeared on the ground. However, Kong was not careless. After it growled, it stared closely at the deep pit because he could still feel that aura of his opponent. Suddenly that aura grew stronger and stronger. Gradually even Kong developed a slight fear as a loud laugh came from the deep pit. Ha ha ha. I, Kevin, have been practicing hard for many years and still I was stuck at the top of the previous level. I didn't expect to finally get a breakthrough at this crisis point today. An old figure slowly walked out from the deep pit. He carried a thread of blood at the corner of his mouth and a hint of golden light faintly appeared in the dense white light of his entire body. Kevin ascetic monk, cultivating for almost more than a century, practicing hard every day, not daring to slack off for a day, today, he suddenly got a breakthrough. Even with his cultivation of a Tarzan collapsing in front of him without changing his face, he could not help but be ecstatic. Kong slowly backed up, intuitively telling it that this human was even more dangerous than just now. It pounded its chest making a thumping sound to intimidate the opponent. It roared angrily and charged towards the bitter monk once again. The giant beast next to it didn't dare to continue watching the battle. Its body suddenly moved. The five giant snakes opened their bloody mouths, biting towards the bitter cultivator, and its huge tail, which was constantly fluttering in the air, was ready to deliver a fatal blow at any time. The whole ground shook violently. A huge cloud of smoke and dust rose up to the sky. The green bird flew into the air and circled constantly, sharp eyes staring at the battlefield, from time to time. The entire battle fought in the dark, huge trees collapsed from time to time, the battle area energy shooting, blood splashed. As the battle progressed, the ascetic's clothes were torn, his chest was covered in blood, and he didn't know whether it was his own or the beast's, his body was covered in white light, which had gradually turned into a light golden color. The giant beasts in the field, each with injuries, huge sword marks on their bodies, shocking to the eyes. The muscles of their entire bodies were flopping, and blood was constantly gushing out from their bodies. One of the giant snakes was almost cut off at the waist, its huge body sliced into a third by the giant sword. Its body twisted continuously, the immense pain that had exposed it, and it opened its bloody mouth, its huge fangs glinting with an eerie cold light. It frantically lunged and bit at the bitter scholar, but how flexible was the bitter scholar's body? His figure was like lightning, suddenly left and right, light golden sword light, from time to time, he made surprise attacks. Blood light exploded and flashed one after another. The situation had become more and more crisis. Suddenly a sharp whistling sound, from the sky, huge speed, has broken through the sound barrier. Skylar body is like a straight line, head down, sharp mouth, towards the bitter monk electric shot over. The bitter monk's body shape flashed sharply, sword light like a green shadow split, but apparently it was too late. A blood light appeared. The bitter monk cried out in pain, and a left arm fell off at once. A few green feathers fell from the sky. Skylar flew towards the sky. Again, a blood scar had appeared on her back. Blood continuously flowed out from the wound. Chapter 80 Going Home Brandon dived into the deep sea and began to heal his wounds, the energy in his body slowly passed through all parts of his body, and under the stimulation of the huge energy, the cells at the wounds continued to divide and grow. Gradually dense flesh buds appeared at the wound. The flesh buds continued to wriggle, and the wound slowly healed. Immediately after, the scales began to grow. Everything was so orderly. After a few hours, under the repair of the powerful self-healing ability, Brandon's body became intact and bright as new again. Brandon didn't dare to fly into the sky. The satellites in the sky must be searching around for his whereabouts. He had destroyed a city in the human world. 
they would definitely be shouting at him. Before, he was still hiding and sneaking around. Now there was no need for any excuses. A complete tearing apart, a maintenance of world peace was enough to crush Brandon to death. He suddenly regretted it a little bit. Of course, it was definitely not regret for killing a lot of people. He just expressed regret for killing so many people. What he really regretted was that he was just too reckless. Before he had thought of any retreat, he had foolishly rushed towards the city when he was swept away by his anger. It was fortunate that he reacted in time. Otherwise, his entire body might have been accounted for there. Those missiles were powerful, right? Such a huge missile, Brandon simply could not imagine. With a direct hit, at least serious injury was certain. His body was a treasure, dragon skin, dragon blood, dragon liver, all are priceless treasures. Those countries came to kill him because of his body, right? Brandon's eyes began to glow with gold when he thought of this. But then he lost his head. You want dragon blood. You can use money to buy it. If a liter of $100 million, his body is so big, 10,000 liters of dragon blood is always there. I would give it, but not with such violence. Brandon secretly muttered. Brandon did not dare to fly in the sky, had to dive at the bottom of the sea. Flesh wings slightly flapped. The huge body in the sea water quickly shot forward. Swimming in the sea was actually similar to being in the air, just a little slower. Brandon swam along the coastline, towards South America. His huge body made his swimming speed not slow at all. With a slight flap of his fleshy wings, Brandon swam forward quickly. On the way Brandon carefully avoided a few submarines, and after a few hours, Brandon finally arrived at his old home, the Amazon forest. He swam towards the Amazon basin. The huge river was big enough to accommodate his huge body. Gradually the river was getting narrower and narrower. Similarly, the jungle around him was getting denser and denser. Some old trees even extended their roots firmly into the river, which caused Brandon's huge body to begin to make certain turns. Several crocodiles were frolicking in the river, and they made grunting noises from time to time. From time to time, the huge hippopotamus peeked out of the water and spat out a long mouthful of vapor, followed by diving down to the bottom of the river and beginning to eat the fresh aquatic grass at the bottom. Hippopotamuses spent most of their lives eating water plants. Brandon's stomach began to drum when he saw the hippopotamus's fat ass. Normally after a giant dragon's body was heavily damaged and repaired by its strong self-healing ability, its stomach would feel especially hungry. However, right now, Brandon's heart returned to his heart, so he had to give the hippopotamuses but a hard stare as a huge black shadow, which swiftly crossed over from above the river bottom. The hippo suddenly and inexplicably winced, and then felt a terrifying aura, approaching from afar. The hippo's obese body was immediately buried tightly in the mud. The crocodile frolicking on the river suddenly seemed to feel something, panicked and crawled toward the shore, before climbing to the shore, saw a huge shadow, from the bottom of the river quickly slipped through. The crocodile eyes showed a look of fear. Brandon did not converge the dragon power at all. He was too excited. Once again back to the Amazon, it was like returning home. An inexplicable emotion lingers in Brandon's heart. His heart was full of fire. Brandon swam all the way, startled countless animals in the river. They were startled like the chickens and dogs. Some even directly rolled their eyes. They swam towards the deep water instantly, scared to death. Swimming all the way, he sneaked up the bank carefully glanced at the sky, and his body quickly ran towards the dense forest. There was simply no path in the dense forest for such a large creature to walk on, however. If there was no path, then it would make its own path. Brandon's huge body was like a giant road roller. Wherever the dragon passed, giant trees fell, and commotion began to occur in the jungle, as hordes of animals began to run for thousands of miles. Brandon's running speed was very fast, those trees couldn't block Brandon's huge body. Brandon ran all the way. A five or six meters wide flat avenue suddenly appeared in the dense forest. Gradually, Brandon also began to like. With the body constantly hit the activities of the trees, listening to the trees' card friction, card friction loud noise, Brandon felt a kind of indescribable pleasure all over his body. He began to run towards the trees, some of the diameter of one or two meters of the giant trees, in Brandon's huge force, a tree fell, the huge jungle. There was a constant loud sound of ka 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 ka, -ka. Both herbivores and ferocious carnivores were moving away from this area in droves. The loud noise obviously scared the little guys. Until a few days later, there was no noise coming from the woods. They returned to the jungle, 
and the jungle began to be lively again. Just that giant dragon opened up the avenue. Every time the animals passed by, they revealed a look of fear. Gradually over a few hills and through a few rivers, Brandon gradually came to a huge lake, and in front of the lake there was a huge mountain with a snow-capped peak. Brandon looked at this huge mountain peak and thought, Perhaps it is near the countryside. Brandon suddenly stopped when he ran here. I wonder what happened to Kong and the five giant snakes now. It's not like they're fighting every day again. I wonder if the humans have found Snake Valley either? Brandon's emotions changed drastically, the giant dragon's face, suddenly happy and sad. Finally, he shook his head, cursing. Then he began to quickly run towards the mountain. Chapter 81 The Battle of Crossing Ranks The two sides resumed their standoff. The monk was in severe pain, his brow tightly furrowed. Pale golden fighting chi flickered around him, his face was pale, and blood flowed continuously from his severed arm. He pressed on the wound, and the bleeding gradually slowed until the wound started to scab over. Both sides were heavily injured. The Vajra was covered with dozens of sword wounds, its flesh torn and blood gushing from its injuries. It panted heavily, blood trickling from its snarling mouth. A giant snake lay on the ground, barely alive. The atmosphere was tense. No one dared to make a move. At this moment, a faint dragon roar echoed from the sky. A massive shadow approached from a distance, and the expressions of the beasts eased. Skylar let out a loud cry. The dragon had arrived. The monk was on guard, sensing a rapidly approaching danger. He looked up to see a massive purple-gold dragon flying towards them, its large wings spread wide. The dragon appeared furious, its pale golden eyes full of killing intent. It roared, opening its massive jaws, a hint of red deep in its throat. Brandon was furious. He hadn't expected humans to dare to slaughter in Snake Valley during his absence. He opened his mouth and spewed a red flame towards the monk. The monk, wrapped in golden fighting chi, posed a significant threat to Brandon. He could feel the monk's immense aura suppressing him. This was the power of a lesser heaven level. Brandon surmised. He hadn't expected such a powerful expert among humans. Seeing the flames, the monk quickly dodged to the side, his body lifting off the ground. Though unsteady at first, he gradually gained control. Upon reaching the lesser heaven level, beings acquire the ability to fly. The monk's flight became increasingly stable, moving agilely through the air as if it were second nature. Despite the considerable consumption of fighting she required for flight, the breakthrough to the lesser heaven level connected his energy with the world, continuously replenishing his reserves. Under this continuous flow of energy, the fighting chi consumed by flying was insignificant. He started to fly towards the dragon, intending to defeat it first before negotiating. This way, the negotiation would be easier, and he would have the upper hand. However, before he could reach the dragon, he suddenly felt a heavy force pulling him down, causing him to plummet uncontrollably towards the ground. As he approached the dragon, it had already cast a gravity spell over him. Suddenly, a massive spike shot up from the ground. The monk quickly slashed it with his sword, but blood began to seep from his wounded arm again. Suddenly, a red glow appeared around him, and intense heat gathered. Within seconds, a fiery giant emerged from the ground, radiating scorching heat. It took massive steps toward the monk. The intense heat caused his hair to curl, making it impossible for the monk to get close. He slashed at the giant with his pale golden sword light. However, the fiery giant seemed ethereal, not solid. Though the sword light created a crack on the giant's tall body, it quickly healed, and the giant continued to charge at the monk as if unscathed. The giant's speed was no match for the monk's agility. He ran forward quickly occasionally turning to unleash a slash of golden sword chi. Suddenly, the monk felt his body slow down. The surrounding heat increased, and the air became stifling. A massive wall of flames rose from the ground, gradually encircling him. The fiery giant behind him seemed to grow stronger, its body expanding as it pursued him. The monk cursed under his breath, releasing all his pale golden fighting chi. The powerful chi disrupted the gravity spell and he shielded his body with it, attempting to escape. However, it was too late. Flames several meters high engulfed him. A few seconds later, the monk jumped out, his body smoking, and all his clothes burned away. Brandon, seeing that his magic couldn't defeat the monk, roared in fury. He charged at the monk, sharp claws extending from his paws, 
gleaming with a metallic sheen. Before the monk could catch his breath, he felt a terrifying pressure descending from above. Hastily, he raised his great sword and unleashed a slash of pale golden sword chi at the dragon. The sword light struck the dragon, but only caused a few sparks to fly. The monk's sword light couldn't penetrate the dragon's formidable defense. Brandon felt a slight pain but continued his descent, his massive body blocking out the entire sky. The monk stopped fleeing, realizing that if he kept running, he would surely lose. It was time to make a final stand. He raised his great sword, its energy pulsating, and with a loud shout, he charged at the dragon. His body was enveloped in fighting chi, radiating powerful energy waves that disrupted Brandon's gravity spell. The monk's incredible speed left Brandon no time to dodge. Raising his great sword, a blinding golden light appeared in the sky, resembling a small sun. Terrifying energy surged from the sword, slashing towards the dragon. Brandon squinted slightly and swung his tail around. Dodging would be foolish now. In a narrow path, the brave win. If Brandon dodged, his momentum would weaken. He trusted in his body's defense. If an earth-level peak dragon's defense couldn't withstand a lesser heaven-level human monk, dragons wouldn't be known as a formidable race. Moreover, this dragon had trained in the Golden Bell body refinement technique. With a tearing sound, the great sword struck Brandon's tail. The powerful impact caused the tail to pause slightly, emitting a shower of sparks. The sword felt like it was cutting into steel. The dragon's scales cracked slightly, and a trickle of blood flowed from the tail. Before the monk could marvel at the dragon's defense, the massive tail continued its forward motion. With a loud crash, the tail, several times thicker than the monk's body, struck him. He was flung into the air, blood scattering from his mouth. The powerful blow had seriously injured him. A few seconds later, the monk's body crashed heavily to the ground, creating a shallow crater. Chapter 82 cooperation with the Holy See? The ascetic monk fell heavily to the ground, a mouthful of blood gushing out once again. Slaying dragons wasn't easy. In most cases, the dragon slays the slayer instead. The monk did not expect this dragon, not yet an adult, to be so strong. Even though he had just broken through to the small heaven level, he still felt like a baby against the dragon. Seeing the giant dragon's massive body descending from the sky, he watched it walk towards him step by step, its huge shadow slowly engulfing him. The dragon's enormous mouth opened slightly, emitting a faint red light from deep within its throat. The ascetic hurriedly propped up his severely injured body and staggered to his feet, performing an odd salute and shouting, Honorable dragon, please stop, I have something to say. Brandon immediately stopped in his tracks upon hearing this, his loud voice echoing through Serpent Valley. Oh, cunning human, if you have any last words, Say them quickly. Don't think you can stall for time. These tricks are useless against the great dragon. Do you expect help from those beside you? As he spoke, Brandon glanced at the crowd nearby, his tone mocking. However, he was slightly wary. The clerics, who had been trembling and motionless since the start of the battle, stepped back in terror as the dragon's head turned towards them. They hadn't expected the giant dragon to speak. The ascetic sighed bitterly and said aloud, Honorable giant dragon, we did not come here to start a war. We came to cooperate with you on behalf of the Holy See. Cooperate? Brandon laughed. What could we possibly cooperate on? Moreover, you have injured my men. Is this your attitude towards cooperation? If you can't give me a satisfactory reason, you'll all stay here. Brandon's eyes gleamed fiercely. Honorable Dragon, I'm extremely sorry for injuring your men. As soon as we arrived, we were attacked and had to defend ourselves. It was purely for self-preservation. Self-preservation? Ha ha ha. Cunning humans, you entered the territory of the giant dragon without my invitation, so you should be punished. From now on, you are the slaves of the giant dragon if you wish to live. As for you, human powerhouse, if you don't give me a satisfactory reason, I will have no choice but to kill you, as your strength poses a danger to Dragon Valley. The ascetic, clearly in control, spoke eloquently. Honorable dragon, Thank you for acknowledging my personal strength. Although I may not be at the peak of human power, many others possess strength similar to mine. Personal strength is insignificant compared to the overall power of humanity. Although ordinary humans may not have my strength, they possess powerful weapons that could seriously injure or even kill you. 
We have come here representing the most powerful sect of mankind to cooperate with you. If you join the sect, we will guarantee your safety and protect you from human attacks. Brandon fell silent. He had long been tired of humans hunting him, and aligning with a powerful faction could be beneficial. It would mean he wouldn't have to hide anymore. He knew the Holy See had a strong influence worldwide, particularly in the West. If he could find refuge with them, international politics might prevent further pursuit. However, losing his freedom for safety was not appealing, and he feared it could be a trap. He also wondered if the Holy See could withstand the pressure, as they were unaware he had just attacked a human city. Considering this, Brandon spoke. Oh, messenger of the Holy See, you should ask someone who can make decisions if the Holy See can guarantee I won't be attacked by humans again. If they can, we can discuss cooperation. You might not know, but I recently attacked a human city. The ascetic was taken aback, not expecting such a situation. Honorable dragon, this is beyond my expectation, and I cannot make any guarantees. I need to return to the Holy See to discuss this. Brandon nodded. Strong human, I won't kill you. Go back and discuss this with someone in charge. But the others stay as punishment for trespassing into Dragon territory. To prevent you from revealing Dragon Valley's secrets, we must sign a contract. Contract? What contract? The ascetic looked doubtful, fear in his heart. Don't be suspicious. Everything here must remain secret, and I don't want more interruptions before cooperating with the church. A basketball-sized dragon scale fell off Brandon's body. He cringed in pain, bit the tip of his tongue, and sprayed blood into the air. The blood and dragon scale hovered, defying gravity. Guided by Brandon's spiritual power, the blood carved into the scale. A black gas appeared, seemingly containing a grudging spirit, howling inside. The scale fell in front of the ascetic. The ascetic monk, seeing the bizarre scale, felt uneasy despite his experience recognizing strong spiritual energy within. Strong human, drop a drop of blood, and you can leave. Otherwise, no matter your strength, you will die here today. Fearful, the ascetic knew he was too injured to escape. The dragon could easily tear him apart, and having just increased his strength, he hoped to live longer. Reluctantly, he bit his fingertip, letting a drop of blood fall onto the scale. As soon as the blood touched the scale, black gas emerged forming a horrifying ghost face that lunged at the ascetic monk. He retreated in fear, but the ghost face was too fast and disappeared into his body before he could react. Despite running his fighting chi and examining his body, he found nothing. The dragon scale had returned to its purple-golden color, shining in the evening sunlight. Chapter 83 Surrendering Humans After the ascetic finished dripping the blood, he respectfully made a strange salute to the dragon then stood up and limped towards the outside of Snake Valley. Halfway there, he turned back to the human clerics, stay here and behave. It is your honor to be slaves of the great dragon. After saying that, he glanced at the huge body of the dragon again, his eyes filled with respect. Under the crowd's incredulous gaze, he turned around and slowly walked towards the outside. The group of snakes that surrounded him dispersed, vaguely forming a path. Under the light of the setting sun, his silhouette grew longer and longer. The dragon turned its massive body to face the remaining humans. Evil dragon, what have you done to Elder Kevin? I, Augustus, won't let you have your way. A young cleric, despite his fear, stood up on trembling legs. The events just now had been too bizarre, and the giant dragon had already become synonymous with the soul-devouring devil in his mind. Ha ha ha, what a hot-blooded young man. There aren't many like you anymore. Do you want to slay a dragon? Oh, youngster, where is your sword? The young cleric then remembered he had no weapon in his hand. The huge sword had long since been dropped in panic. He hurriedly picked up the giant sword and waved it up and down, a wary look on his face. It's better to save your strength. That toothpick-like sword of yours can't even break my defense. Are you stronger than that human just now? Devil, you devil, God will bless me. The young cleric finally had a mental breakdown and began to speak incoherently. He rushed towards the giant dragon with his sword, but before he could take a few steps, he felt his body grow heavy, and the fighting chi within him began to slow down. After a few trembling steps, he finally fell to the ground and bawled his eyes out. The stimulation these humans had received today had already exceeded the sum of their entire lives. All of the humans clung together, 
facing unknown forces that were often much more terrifying than normal. If they saw a giant beast or a dragon, they only felt terror. Then, after facing the eerie ghost face and the changes with the elder, they began to have a mental breakdown. Brandon immediately reacted as soon as he saw this situation, and he secretly laughed in his heart. If he hadn't seen that the foundation of these humans fighting Chi was still good, he would have fed them to the snakes long ago. If these people were slightly cultivated, they would still be very useful. In the future, they could be used to solve many problems, such as the harassment of Snake Valley. Brandon noticed that the number of snakes in Snake Valley seemed to have decreased significantly. Flying all the way here, he only saw a few sparse ones. It seemed that during his absence, Snake Valley had suffered significant losses. If humans attacked a few more times, the snakes in Snake Valley might disappear. He then laughed out loud. Humans, the great dragon merely signed a loyalty contract with that human. Only the one who signed the pact can I truly feel comfortable letting leave. The greed and cunning of humans compelled me to do so. But with your strength, you are not qualified enough to make me sign the pact. Additionally, I will give you a month's time. If your strength doesn't satisfy me by then, I think the outcome should be very clear to you. At this time, a man past middle age stood up shakily. Great dragon, I am deacon right of the church and I am willing to sign a contract with you. I think that I will be very helpful to you and I know everything about the human world. As long as you let me go back, then you will know all the basic intelligence of the human race. Moreover, I will use my network to influence public opinion and change humans' impression of dragons. You need a spokesperson in the human world and I am your best choice. Also, I have a great deal of wealth to offer the great dragon. I hope the great dragon will let me go back. Brandon took a look at the man with a bit of a beer belly. Aside from the slight panic of shock, he seemed circumspect and full of compassion, with a strength of about level 2 or so. He did seem a bit too old to be a warrior, and it did seem like he needed one of those himself. Human, you know your way around. I like people like you, and as you'll find out later, serving the gargoyle is the honor of your life. I can let you go. However, although the giant dragon loves treasures, it will not accept the family wealth of its subordinates. The deacon was ecstatic after hearing that. Great dragon, you are truly as powerful as a god. Your kindness will be immortalized in the history of the world and your generosity. All right, you can leave after signing the contract. Besides, I very much dislike your bragging. Brandon had a headache and hurriedly interrupted his pontificating. The dragon scales on the ground floated back up, a cloud of blood spurted out of his mouth, and his mental energy quickly carved. Within moments, the scales fell in front of Deacon Wright. Deacon Wright hesitated for a while, and finally bit his lip, put his middle finger in his mouth, and bit hard. His finger trembled as he reached towards the dragon scale. The blood dripped onto the dragon scale. A black gas immediately surged into Wright's body. He didn't feel anything strange. On the contrary, he felt that he was in a very good state and his strength seemed to have vaguely increased. He once again faced the giant dragon, and he didn't know why, but his heart was full of respect. He respectfully said, Great dragon, my subordinate will leave now. Take that dragon scale with you. I think it should be able to be exchanged for quite a lot of money in the human world. It should be used. Great dragon, you are too generous. When I return to the human world, I will try to publicize the glorious image of the great dragon. In the future, when humans see a dragon, they will not be greeted with cannonballs, but flowers and applause. I hope so. Brandon narrowed his eyes slightly, imagining what it would be like. The corners of his mouth couldn't help but curl up. Deacon Wright picked up the huge scales and bowed before walking towards the outside of Snake Valley, which was filled with snakes. He was scared to look at them, but the snakes avoided him when they saw him and didn't attack as if they possessed intelligence. Wright hurriedly accelerated his steps towards the outside, secretly thinking about the huge project he would undertake in the future. Chapter 84 The Safety of Snake Valley Brandon fantasized for a moment before coming to his senses. He couldn't help but shake his head, cursing what an imagination he had. But that scenario was really mesmerizing. Brandon glanced at the remaining five men and one woman, their fighting chi being vaguely around the second or third level. The highest one was Augustus, who stood out, already reaching the peak of the third level, about to break through to the earth level. With a little cultivation, he should be able to serve as a very good fighter. The one with the weakest strength was that young girl cleric, only having the strength of a fighting spirit level one. However, 
Her beautiful looks gave her some extra points, and she should still be able to be cultivated. Brandon slowly pondered. Although it is said that one can only watch from afar and not play profanely, at least if you put her by your side, you can still raise your eyes, no? Brandon secretly nodded his head, and his eyes quickly glanced towards the young girl's developed breasts. Westerner's development is good. Her breasts can actually be compared to a middle-aged Chinese woman. Brandon turned his huge body and walked towards the giant beasts to cool them down first. Waiting for their excited mood to calm down, he planned to talk carefully and again. This group of young people, the quality of their hearts is really too poor. They really cannot withstand another shock. He secretly thought. The behemoths have been injured. Let's first look at the situation of their injuries. Brandon walked towards the behemoths. Skylar was lying on the back of Kong, both eyes slightly closed. Brandon could not help but be shocked. He did not think that Skylar was also injured. Brandon had just flown over when Skylar was still hovering in the air and did not even notice that she was injured. Immediately after that, he was busy fighting with the humans and signing the contract, and did not even think that Skylar was already injured. Brandon couldn't help but secretly blame himself. He was worried in his heart, could not help but speed up his steps towards Skylar. Skylar could not help but open her eyes, saw Brandon come over, could not help but chirp and bark. Brandon climbed to the front. He discovered that Skylar's back had a blood scar and there was a lot of blood on her wings. He put his paw on Skylar's body, and his spiritual power probed, and found that her wounds had almost healed. Brandon then let go of his worries. He looked towards Kong, who was lying on the ground with his eyes tightly closed, seemingly healing his wounds. The physical quality of the giant beast was indeed quite strong. Dozens of wounds all over Kong's body had actually stopped bleeding and began to slowly scab over. Brandon was pleased to find that Kong had actually reached the earth level. The body also vaguely changed. The whole body actually appeared scale-like patterns. The skin began to become like a horny type of development, and the defense had become even stronger. Brandon passed Kong and walked towards the front. The giant snake that was almost chopped off lay helplessly on the ground. This was a black giant snake, with huge wounds that seemed shocking, with buds of flesh wriggling, slowly healing. Brandon looked at it and the speed of this healing was almost catching up with his own. He found that the giant snake's head actually appeared in the fiery red small horns. Brandon's heart had a burst of joy. I did not expect this. The giant snake has finally evolved and turned into a scaly dragon. Brandon clawed the giant snake lying on the ground under his body, a majestic energy slowly surging into the body of the giant snake. No, it was the body of an auger dragon, Jowlong. Jowlong. With the help of this huge energy, the flow of fighting chi in the body was getting faster and faster. The huge energy was replenished, constantly repairing the body's wounds. The flesh buds grew rapidly, and a few hours later, the body of the huge wound finally completely healed. The fighting chi in the body was blessed by the disaster and had reached the peak of the third level. This black jowlong began to be active again, its giant head close to the ground, respectfully lying on the ground. Brandon stood up and looked towards the other giant snakes, who relied on their own self-healing ability and had already recovered more or less. Kong opened its eyes and saw Brandon. It was so emotional that it started bawling like a child. It kept pounding on its chest, and the wounds that had just healed began to burst into bleeding flowers again, but Kong didn't care. It let out a vomiting cry and jumped around Brandon its huge weight causing the ground to shake slightly. The other snakes also came to their senses from their healing. The snakes' natural indifference made them not as excited as Kong. But their hearts were filled with gratitude and respect, and they were no less respectful. They bowed their heads, tightly lying on the ground. Brandon was touched in his heart. At that time, when he subdued giant snake and Kong, he only wanted to use them as cannon fodder, just to slightly block the pace of the human attack when the humans discovered him so that he could escape. But after gradually getting along with these beasts, he realized that the feelings between the beasts were so pure and simple. Brandon gradually began to treat them as his own little brothers. In his previous life, he lived in the human world. Brandon had seen a lot of human trickery, hook and corner. Everyone seemed to live behind a mask. After he reincarnated as a lizard, he realized that the feelings of animals are so valuable and sincere. Compared to the cunning of humans, Brandon was still happier to deal with animals. Since becoming a lizard, especially after Brandon received the inherited memories of the dragon, 
he found that his identification with humans had begun to fade. Perhaps he could never become human again in this lifetime. The memories of his previous life, which Brandon sometimes thought he was having like a dream, seemed so distant. To the dragons, humans were nothing more than one of the many intelligent races, far less noble than themselves. Brandon shook his massive head as if trying to shake off these jumbled thoughts. He asked Vajra about what had happened during the time he had been out. Hearing that when he wasn't there, the humans had actually sent out 500 to 600 people to attack towards the Snake Valley side, Brandon couldn't help but feel anger in his heart towards the greed of the humans. While angry, he also had palpitations. Fortunately, it was not the army. Otherwise, Kong and the others would not still be fine. However, after this incident, Brandon began to consider the safety of Snake Valley. Although upon further listening to Kong, he realized that all the human beings had been eliminated. But sooner or later, one day, Snake Valley would enter the military's line of sight. One should think of a new safe way. If one's own lair can't be preserved, one is really too disgraceful to the dragon race. Chapter 85 Trial Period of One Month But these were not busy to deal with at first. Anyway, there was no hurry, and there was no better method in his own mind. He still needed to rummage through the memories in his mind. The memories in his mind were like an encyclopedia, although with the progress of his strength, the memories were slowly being absorbed and digested by Brandon. But how huge these memories were, with Brandon's strength, what he was able to absorb was just a drop in the bucket. The vast majority of the memories were placed in a corner of the mind. Brandon wanted to use them, but he could only look at them one by one. It was essentially finding a needle in a haystack. Everything depended on luck. These weren't the most important topics right now. The most important thing right now is food. He realized he was getting hungry and his stomach was already starting to drum. He then told Kong and the five giant Jiao to go outside and hunt some food over. These five giant scaly snakes, one of them was a golden ringed snake, a cobra, a rattlesnake, and two pythons. But since the gradual evolution into giant scaly dragon, the characteristics of the previous as a snake slowly faded. These giant scaly dragons, now in addition to the color change, the form of the hair surface became more and more similar. For example, the golden ringed snake changed into a giant auger. The original triangular cone-shaped body slowly became rounded. For example, the rattlesnake's tail, which was originally a characteristic of the rattlesnake, has gradually deteriorated, and in a short time, it will slowly disappear. All of the giant sculpins began to slowly grow a ring of fish-like fins on either side of their heads. A row of, sharp, chamfered horns were born on their backs, only an inch long and short, and obviously not yet fully grown. The tail also began to flatten out, looking more suited to moving through the water. The look appeared even more menacing. Brandon watched as Kong and the five giant augers faded into the distance, and he turned his massive body towards the group of humans. In the huge size of the giant dragon these humans looked so small, like the size of a mouse in his previous life. Brandon towered over them and said loudly, Humans, next, we'll move on. Mercifully I will give you a one-month trial period. If after the one-month period has passed, your strength hasn't progressed, Let's say let the fighting chi in your body make a small advancement of one rank. I think the ending should be very clear to you guys. I never need useless slaves here. You guys will not even possess the qualifications to sign a contract by then, Brandon said and suddenly paused, pointing to the group of snakes that surrounded the outside from afar. These snakes, obviously much larger than the ones outside the Snake Valley, almost every one of them was as thick as a thigh. A few of them were even the size of a bucket. The crowd couldn't help but stir, with horror on their faces, and that young girl cleric, who was so scared that she wailed and cried, Brandon was satisfied with their reaction, and went on to say, You can see the snakes outside, they hate humans, because you killed countless of their kind. Of course for cute little girls, the dragons are still very sympathetic, eh. This little human girl, come to the side of the great dragon, you don't have to suffer from this restriction. The great dragon is now lacking a maid of honor. If you serve me to my satisfaction, I think I will give you a chance to survive. It is your honor to serve the great dragon. Now come to my side. That teenage cleric heard that, and her body panicked as she kept backing away. Even though Brandon tried his best to put on an amiable smile, that hideous dragon's head was unspeakably terrifying to human eyes, and the little girl was so scared that she didn't even know how to cry, her body backing up one after another. At this time Augustus stood up again shakily, vaguely wanting to say something. But suddenly his face was white, lips wriggled a little, nothing was said. 
The hidden pressure of the dragon almost made it difficult for him to even stand. Brandon was also feeling a little impatient, a little annoyed. He roared loudly, and a huge loud sound echoed through the Snake Valley. Humans, don't challenge the dragon's patience, you're joking with your lives. The wrath of a giant dragon is not something everyone can withstand. The giant dragon's nostrils began to spew out thick smoke. A grain of bursting sparks came out from its nostrils, and a sulfur-scented breath came out. The young girl monk was so scared that she hurriedly stood up and took one difficult step towards the giant dragon, her legs trembling violently, and a hot stream immediately wet her pants. Brandon also did not expect that he was so scary at that moment, actually worried that the other girls were wetting their pants. Brandon could not help but burst with a hot face, but fortunately, the giant dragon's scale armor thick could not be seen. The young cleric took a few steps, as if she had used up all her strength, and sat on her but on the ground. But Brandon didn't give her any more trouble. Brandon's spiritual power quickly scanned around the young girl's body, discovering that the human's cultivation of chi was rather low-grade. Brandon remembered that any kind of chi cultivation method in his inventory was a hundred times more superior than these. However, with this low-grade fighting chi cultivation method, they were able to cultivate to this level. It could be seen that their qualifications were, indeed, quite good. However, Brandon did not intend to pass on their high-level cultivation methods. After all, it was not my kind. Their hearts would be different. Even though there was a demonic contract to bind them, this contract was not flawless. Once the party that was subjected to it, if their strength exceeded their own by too much, they would end up breaking free from the bond. And if it was serious, the contract would also backfire, causing them to be subjected to the other party. Brandon looked down at the group of snakes in the distance. Among them, there were three giant snakes that appeared to be very huge, vaguely as thick as a bucket. One of them was the python that Brandon Drake had wanted to impart its cultivation methods to at that time when he was still in the Snake Valley. But before he could start teaching him, the humans started hunting for him, and Brandon had to put it off. The other two snakes should have come later, and by the looks of it, the hidden bloodline in their bodies was very good. So they should have a future in cultivation as well. Brandon's mental power slowly covered and directly connected to the Mind Lake calling them three giant snakes to come to his cave tomorrow morning. The three giant snakes look very excited, cold eyes, flashing frenzied light, their heads tightly low, the first through the spirit of wisdom. They intuitively feel that the time to change their fate has arrived. When the time comes, they will also become as powerful as those few commanders. After dealing with these things, Brandon felt the ground shaking slightly. Kong and the others had returned. In addition to humans, Kong and their giant beasts, long ago had no natural enemies, deserved to be the of this jungle. Whether it was ferocious carnivorous beasts or large herbivores, in the face of Kong and the five giant scaly scales, it was just like a newborn baby, without the power of resistance. Their huge size and powerful strength had caused them to have long since exceeded the standards of ordinary creatures. In a sense, they were no longer ordinary beasts. They should be called magical beasts now. A strong creature with advanced intelligence. Chapter 86 Slaves Discussion There was a commotion in the Snake Valley. A cloud of dust was brewing. Kong and a few of the giant beasts came all the way towards this side in a whirlwind. The body of the giant Jiao was like a small train, with corpses piled up on top of it. Kong was carrying three crocodile tails in his left hand, an antelope on his shoulder, and in his other hand, he was actually carrying a bison. A large number of animal corpses were continuously thrown onto the open space, and the sky seemed to have suddenly rained meat. In no time, the numerous animal carcasses piled up a small mountain. The rich food resources in the jungle were enough to feed a large number of creatures in Snake Valley. Compared to the animals here, the small island in the sea was like a behemoth country. All the animals looked huge. Perhaps that mysterious island in the sea was the only place that was suitable for the behemoths to survive. After staying here for a long time, they would gradually become lazy, and a stress-free day would cause them to lose the motivation to progress. Only in a place of crisis will their strength go further. Brandon had a vague idea of moving the behemoths to the mysterious island. However, seeing the food coming over, he immediately put down the thoughts in his mind and rushed towards the food. The hunger in his belly was really unbearable. He was too lazy to barbecue the food one by one. Moreover, if he cooked all the food, he didn't know how long it would take. His huge tonnage body immediately ran towards the meat mountain. Brandon didn't care about the blood and gore, 
hygiene and sanitation. Directly grabbing a crocodile and shoving it towards the giant mouth, the hard steel teeth of the giant dragon took a bite together, and the terrifying force of the jaws instantly crushed the bones of the crocodile. The crocodile was instantly bloody. Blood juice slowly flowed down from the corner of Brandon's mouth. In less than a few seconds, he swallowed the whole crocodile. He actually didn't even spit out the bones and swallowed them directly into his belly. The giant dragon's stomach quickly digested it, and his expression slowly soothed. His giant claws grabbed another huge boar and shoved it towards his mouth. In this way, Brandon shoved one after another into the giant mouth, his teeth crunching the bones to make crisp cackling sounds, and these sounds continued to ring out like a magic spell. The humans next to him shivered. Brandon's huge mouth was like a huge meat grinder, gradually a pile of meat mountain like a small mountain, slowly reduced. The dragon's terrifying digestive ability made Brandon's stomach like a bottomless pit. Almost everything was digested as much as it came. Brandon's huge mouth was like a huge meat grinder, gradually a pile of meat mountain like a small mountain, slowly reduced. The dragon's terrifying digestive ability made Brandon's stomach like a bottomless pit. Almost as much as it came, it digested as much as it came. In the end, Brandon himself didn't know how many of them he had eaten. He only felt that the huge mountain of meat had only one-third left and only then did he stop. He burped and felt his whole body start to become lazy and comfortable. He grabbed a huge bison and threw it directly towards the crowd. The huge bison fell from a high altitude with a loud bang. The crowd couldn't help but be startled. The bison's corpse fell from a high altitude, its belly instantly ruptured, and its organs slowly flowed out from its belly, a foul odor wafting out in all directions. Humans, these are your food for today. As soon as the words fell, he dragged his huge body towards the cave and crawled. After eating his fill, he felt lazy all over and a bit sleepy. Walking to the cave, he found that everything hadn't changed much. It was still the same as before he left. He lay down on his back in the nest and felt a breath of comfort coming from all over his body and couldn't help but sigh secretly in his heart. Gold nest, silver nest, not as good as one's own grass nest. Ah, this word is really true now. Before he could think for long, his eyelids began to slowly close, and in a short while, thunderous snores came faintly from the cave. It wasn't until Brandon Drake left that King Kong, a few of their behemoths, began to feast as well. If compared to how King Kong and a few of their behemoths ate, Brandon Drake was rather the same as a svelte gentleman. King Kong grabbed an antelope and directly tore it into two halves, stuffing it into his mouth. A few giant scaly scales were even more direct, opening their bloody mouths and swallowing a bison in one gulp. That wolf swallowing. Looking at those clerics, they couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat, feeling as if they had gone to hell. They were like poor lambs cowering in the corner, not daring to move for fear that their sudden movements would cause misunderstandings among the behemoths. Not long after, the behemoths finished their food, and the five giant scaly scales each returned to their own caves to digest. King Kong lay on the ground not far from the giant dragon's nest. It did not have a nest until now. When it slept, it slept in the open air. King Kong glanced towards the group of humans with fierce eyes. With his huge eyes slightly closed, he began to sleep, and it wasn't long before loud snores began to come from the crowd. After a long time, the sound of yawning came from the crowd. These humans, after today's series of scares, had long been exhausted and hungry, and the long period of keeping a single movement, not moving at all, had made their whole bodies sore and weak. At that moment, a mosquito-like rattling sound resounded through the crowd. I say, everyone, should we sneak out while those monsters are sleeping? This place is simply a demon's lair. If this continues, I'll have a mental breakdown. A young lad whispered, unable to stop his eyes from glancing over to Kong's side. Seeing that King Kong didn't react at all, before he let out a slight sigh of relief. Othello, do you have any good ideas? This place, I don't want to stay for a moment. If we don't advance in cultivation after a month by then, they'll kill us. I've only just advanced to the second layer up to now, telling me to break through in a month. How is that possible? Cindy, you'd better wake up. How far can you escape? As soon as you get out of this range, the surrounding swarm of snakes will drown you. And even if you can kill your way out, won't it startle these monsters? Don't get involved with us if you can't escape by yourself. Dragons aren't such merciful creatures. Klein, what do you mean by that? Do you really intend to stay and be a slave of the dragon? 
Oomph. Then we still have to see if the giant dragon looks at you? I know that you're about to advance to the third level recently, but even with the strength of the third level, you're still scum in the eyes of a giant dragon. Shoo. Sure. The crowd's voices suddenly quieted at this moment. King Kong's giant arms suddenly raised, scratched the long hair on his body, turned around and rolled over on his back, and snoring sounded immediately afterward. Kong's giant arms suddenly raised, scratched the long hair on his body, turned around and rolled over on his back, and snoring sounded immediately afterward. After a long time, the mosquito-like voice came back from the crowd. Augustus, to be honest, I've already endured you for a long time. Aren't you about to break through to the earth level? What's there to be proud of? If you have the ability, then escape. If you don't dare to escape, won't you still have to be a slave of a giant dragon when the time comes? Everyone stop arguing. We should unite. God will bless us. Let's hurry up and think about what to do next, right? A young girl's soft voice rang out. Angela, you're all right. You're just being a dragon's maid. And with such a huge tonnage, the dragon won't do anything to you. As long as the dragon you serve is satisfied. We're in deep shit. What else is there to think about? Let's just eat. My stomach is rumbling. Cindy, the gargoyle is so vicious. I tremble when I see it. I don't want to. And, uhu, thought Angela who suddenly wailed. In the church, Angela, who had never been treated like a princess, once she thought that she was actually scared to pee her pants today, she suddenly cried in aggravation. Sure. Gently, Angela. Don't startle that giant ape. Angela couldn't help but be startled at hearing this. Hurriedly, she stopped crying. But that sobbing couldn't be held back, and every time Angela sobbed, it made their hearts heavy, jump, and the atmosphere suddenly became tense. It was only after a while, when they realized that Kong was not reacting at all, that they let out a heavy breath. Scared the hell out of me. Looks like that gorilla is completely asleep. Let's just eat first. I haven't eaten since morning until now. Othello said, looking dejected. It's bison, isn't it? It hasn't been cooked yet. How can I eat it? And you want it cooked for a few minutes? Augustus, save your breath. It's good to have something to eat. If you don't eat it, you'll wait to starve. Klein would never give up any chance to hit Augustus. After a while, a few humans tiptoed to the side of the bison, slowly cut open the skin of the bison with their swords, followed by slicing the meat into pieces, and then grabbed a piece of the bloody meat and stuffed it towards their mouths like savages, their faces indescribably ugly. Chapter 87. Angela's New Job Brandon awoke from his slumber early the next morning, feeling all soothed and energized. He gently shook his huge body and stood up, and found that at the entrance of the cave, there were three huge snakes the size of a bucket lying on the ground. Brandon was stunned, and then he remembered that he had told them yesterday, to come to his lair in the morning. So Brandon let a few of them in. The huge body snaked into Brandon's huge hole, and then respectfully lay on the ground. The three giant snakes' icy cold eyes flashed with a fiery light. Brandon also did not have any nonsense, directly opened the door. Powerful spiritual power, direct invasion of the soul of the other party, forcing a psychic link. For this kind of creature that can't speak, if you want to have a conversation, you can only take this simple and rough method. The majestic voice of the giant dragon immediately resounded in the hearts of these giant snakes. I am very satisfied with the recent performance of the several of you. Moreover, your strength has already vaguely reached the peak of ordinary flesh. If there are no strange encounters or cultivation methods, you can only reach this point in your lifetime, and after a dozen years or so, you will slowly grow old until you die. However, I will pass on the method of cultivation to you later and as long as you cultivate hard, you will slowly surpass the limits of the biological flesh, and your strength will greatly increase, and your lifespan will become even longer. I think you should have seen the changes in the strength of the five commanders. Next you should listen carefully as I will impart to you the methods of cultivation. The three giant snakes, their eyes instantly became glittering, their spirits obviously highly concentrated. However, since these giant snakes' spiritual intelligence was really a bit low, not even comparable to the previous five giant snakes, Brandon took half a day to make them understand the specific cultivation methods. Brandon waved his giant claws and told them to go and cultivate properly on their own, before Brandon let out a light breath. Brandon suddenly vaguely understood a little bit. Why the instructor in his previous life did not like their own, Brandon could not help but be a little depressed. Brandon puffed out a stream of smoke from his nose and slowly walked out of the cave. The sun had risen to noon, 
and the strong sunlight fell on the waterfall at the edge of the cliff, and a seven-colored rainbow appeared. Kong was sitting in the mouth of the cave, yawning from time to time, his hands constantly turning over his long fur to see if there were any bugs. Every now, and then he surveyed the humans in the distance. The long black fur glistened with an oily sheen in the sunlight. King Kong couldn't help but scratch his head and run off to the side when he saw Brandon come out. It seemed that Kong hadn't slept well last night and had been watching the humans to see if they made any rash moves. Luckily, those humans didn't make a move to run away, otherwise, they would really be asking for death. Although Kong looked naive, but that was for his own people, for his enemies, Kong was quite fierce. Brandon's huge body walked towards the humans, and the humans, who had been sitting on the ground and chatting in small voices, began to tense up. One by one, they leaned in close to each other, hoping that their companions would give them a little pathetic security. Humans, don't be so nervous. If you've had enough, go train right away. Otherwise, in a month's time, there will be many among you who will be in the arms of the gods. Also, this human maiden, I think it's time for you to fulfill your duty as a maid of honor. So come with me. After saying this, Brandon's huge body walked back. Angela took a look at her companion and hesitated in her mind before finally gritting her teeth and walking in the direction of the dragon. By the time Brandon reached the waterhole, Angela was already on Brandon's ass, and Brandon turned his head to look at her. She looked horrified and her eyes contained bloodshot eyes, so it looked like she hadn't gotten much sleep all day yesterday. Also, there was blood on her lips and her face was covered in filth. A foul odor emanated from her body. Human, the dragon doesn't like a maid who doesn't love cleanliness. Why don't you go take a bath with me? Angela heard the dragon speak and retreated a few steps in a panic. Then as if she remembered something, she hastily performed an odd salute. Her face flushed a little, and she said in a flustered manner, But, but, honored dragon, I did not bring extra clothes. Humans, a dragon's patience is limited. I do not wish to repeat my words a second time. Brandon walked to the edge of the pool, and then with a thud and an awkward stance, he jumped into the deep pool at the bottom of the waterfall with a huge tonnage, which instantly splashed a dozen meters high. The body sank under the water, only a pair of dragon eyes like searchlights, struggling to open wide, staring closely at Angela. Angela hesitated for a moment, seeing that the dragon had sunk under the water, tears began to well up in her eyes, she gently took off her cleric's robe, and suddenly a beautiful body was exposed to the sunlight. Firm breasts, sheep's fat skin, long and slender legs, coupled with a simple face, everything was so tantalizing, and inside there was nothing but a three-point silk underwear. The huge dragon's eyes under the water could not help but stare even more roundly. Angela hesitated for a moment, and finally did not take off her underwear. Brandon could not help but secretly say it was a pity. She stretched out her slender legs and gently stepped into the small river next to her and began to bathe. The silk underwear was as transparent as if it had been soaked in the river. Brandon felt his nose start to itch a little. Angela in the creek seems to be uncomfortable. Always feel that there is a hot gaze, staring at themselves. But a quick look around revealed nothing. It was only after her hurried shower that Brandon slowly and methodically floated up from the bottom of the tam, his eyes fluttering like a thief, not daring to look at Angela at all. He looked up at the sky and coughed softly. Loudly, he said, Humans, come to my cave when you're done bathing. There's a whole bunch of things to do then. Whitressing isn't a clean job. In the afternoon, Brandon plopped down on the floor and started going through the memories in his head. These memories were some valuable information that Brandon just hadn't been able to fully absorb yet. He slowly flipped through them, looking for ways to make his lair more secure. Angela was sitting next to the dragon, a rag in her hand, and was carefully wiping one scale, one scale at a time. According to the dragon's request, it must be wiped until it was shiny, just a rather large project. Angela had only wiped dozens of scales up to now, only taking up a corner of the huge body of the dragon but she was already tired and sore. Holding back the tears in her eyes, Angela gently rubbed her wrist with her left hand and sighed darkly. Within a moment, the rag was picked up again and wiped towards another dragon scale. Chapter 88 The President's Troubles Just when Brandon secretly returned to Snake Valley and lived a quiet and leisurely life. The human world, however, was a buzz because of the dragon's terrorist attack. The United States once again experienced one of the most serious terrorist attacks since the 9-11 incident 
What was even more shocking was that the protagonist of the terrorist attack this time was not Uncle Bin Laden or any other famous terrorist organization. It was not even a human being. It was a giant dragon, a mythical dragon. Whether it was newspapers, television, or the internet, everywhere, there were a wide range of reports. Previously, people would have been skeptical, thinking that the appearance of the dragon was just some kind of hoax. But this time, they really believed it. Just a day ago, a huge city was attacked by a dragon and many tall buildings collapsed, killing tens of thousands of people. The terrorist attack on the United States this time, just economic losses, more than 5,911 events, and his influence will be more far-reaching. This was the first time mankind has recognized the power of the dragon up close and personal, and it was also the first close encounter between mankind and mythology. As long as you turn on the TV, you can immediately see some experts and professors spitting and explaining all the things that happened and the important impact on the world and far-reaching significance. All the entertainment programs were relaying the reports of the giant dragons and the myth of the giant dragons, and all the newspapers and media were reporting the important losses of this terrorist attack. Humanity seemed to have woken up early in the morning itself and entered the age of myth, and all the people watched with open mouths and dumbfounded. In addition to the shock in their hearts, there was that hint of excitement. Yes, it was excitement. If you say what was the hottest word these days, then anyone who was an earthling will tell you, dragons, or terrorist attacks. Yes, a terror attack by a dragon. The powerful media propaganda of mankind has caused all humans to have a renewed understanding of the dragon. It was no longer a nebulous existence. It was alive and well-living in this world. It has great power and a terrifying size. Even the strong military power of the United States but also cannot stay the dragon. Like it or not, the mythical creature of the dragon has hardened its way into people's sights, and people have begun to talk about it and pay attention to it like crazy. Some religious organizations were pleased to find that their own followers suddenly surged. The people who went to pray every day also started to become pious, and what pleased them the most was that circling money became easier, and the believers seemed to have suddenly become generous. More religious organizations sprouted up like rain. Of course, all of these religious organizations were related to dragons, and some of them even directly worshipped dragons. Whether the dragon was willing or not, it had gradually influenced human life. The heads of all the big countries have already had a headache. The appearance of the dragon has seriously threatened the survival of human beings. And some crazy crowds worshipped the giant dragon and strongly demanded the country to protect it. Even those animal protection organizations began to protest against some attempts to capture the giant dragons. Two days later, the summit of the eight countries was held ahead of schedule. The heads of state of the United States, Britain, Germany, France, Japan, Italy, Russia and Canada began a secret meeting in Paris, France. The content of the meeting was not publicized, and the meeting lasted for two days. After the meeting, the news media saw those heads of state, looking serious, not saying a word, and even without holding a press conference, they each got into their cars and left. Immediately afterwards, some of the major news media received notifications from their respective governments. People were surprised to find that some of the experts and professors on TV began to change their tone. They examined all aspects, whether it was mythology, geography, or the environment, and fully explained that this creature was not actually a giant dragon. It was just a genetic mutation caused by the environmental pollution problem of human beings. Moreover, this monster was extremely evil, full of exuberant destructive desire, and extremely dangerous to human beings. The scholars were as impassioned as if they hadn't been the ones who had said that the appearance of the dragon would bring mankind into a brand new chapter. Some of the heads of the dragon religious organizations were secretly arrested. The human world was calm on the surface, but in the shadows, waves began to rise. The White House of the United States, as a black man, it was very difficult to sit in the position of president. In addition to their own talent, more was the support of multiple consortia. The president of the United States, in the eyes of ordinary people, has a lot of power, but in the end, it was only the spokesman of the forces supported by the consortiums. At this time, the president's brows were tightly locked, and the recent events had put him under a lot of pressure. The terrorist attack of the giant dragon had caused huge economic losses to the United States, and these were only minor matters. What was important was that his own popular support rate had begun to continuously decrease. More critically, the major consortia had begun to be dissatisfied with themselves, and their own efficiency had already made those people unhappy. He raised his head and looked towards the huge picture on the white wall, 
which was his idol Roosevelt. As the most iron-fisted American president, he was the only president to serve four consecutive terms, and he was the only president in the United States in the past hundred years who could stand up to the major consortia. Even the best systems have loopholes, so maybe America needs to change this increasingly corrupt system. A sudden knock on the door interrupted his thoughts. He couldn't help but frown slightly and said softly, Come in. A middle-aged man walked in. His beard was very clean-shaven, and on his lean face, he looked very serious. He held a thick stack of documents in his hands and walked in softly, saying softly, Mr. President, this was this year's military budget plan. It still needs your review. In, just put it here. That middle-aged man, putting down the document, turned around and was about to leave. Because he knew the president's habit, he didn't like to be disturbed when he was thinking. John, stop for a moment. You take a copy of the satellite weapon program that has been shelved before and bring it here. I want to take a closer look at it. All right, you go out first. The office door closed gently and the office fell silent again. The large office appeared empty with only him left and he rubbed his tightly knit brows as he began flipping through the report, the rustling sound of a pin across his fingertips coming from time to time. Chapter 89 Giant Dragon Life Science Alice got out of school, and after saying goodbye to her classmates, she left by herself, carrying her cute little book bag. She wasn't going to do the school bus today. She wanted to walk home slowly. Her home wasn't very far from the school anyway. If she walked slowly, she would be there in half an hour. The entire city had been badly damaged by the giant dragon, and many places were being rebuilt nervously. Alice could see hot construction sites everywhere as she walked along. She slowly crossed the street, passed a familiar corner, and realized that there was actually a forest in front of her. She had never seen such a large forest in a city before. Curious, she slowly walked in. The trees around her were very tall and lush. The forest looked gloomy, colorful mushrooms, all over the place. The mushrooms were so huge that they looked like beautiful huts. Beautiful flowers were vying for attention, and lots of cute little white rabbits, hopping around. They didn't seem to be afraid of people. A bold rabbit actually ran towards Alice, who couldn't help but crouch down her body and hold it in her arms. She laughed happily. The scenery suddenly changed. The bunny suddenly turned into a scary witch, and the colorful flowers, too, disappeared and turned into senile white bones. Those mushrooms were actually monsters. They opened their eyes and slowly opened their bloody mouths, seemingly about to bite at Alice. Alice was terrified and rushed forward to escape. But Alice realized that no matter how desperately she ran forward furiously, but her body did not move in the slightest. The old hag approached Alice step by step. Suddenly a colorful light appeared in the sky and a purple dragon descended from the sky. With a mouthful of flame, it burned the abominable witch into ashes and all the monsters desperately fled in all directions. All the monsters fled desperately, but they were all torn to pieces by the dragon one claw at a time. The dragon walked towards Alice, and Alice's heart was pounding. Beautiful princess, would you like to fly in the sky? Alice nodded vigorously. Alice then grabbed the dragon's neck tightly and flew towards the sky. She found herself getting closer and closer to the stars. Slowly, she could even touch the stars in the sky. The curved moon was right beside her. Just as she wanted to stand on her tiptoes to try and pick a star, Suddenly she felt the bottom of her feet slip and her body quickly fell downwards. She couldn't help but yell out, Alice, wake up. If you don't get up, you'll be late for class. Alice's mom was preparing breakfast in the kitchen, and when she saw that Alice hadn't gotten up yet, she shouted, Got it, mommy. Alice had a false alarm and touched her smooth forehead, realizing that it was all sweaty. After Alice finished washing up, she sat on the dining table, drinking milk while thinking about the dream in her mind and couldn't help but giggle. At this time mom came over. Alice, we're moving next week. Say goodbye to your classmates at school today. Mommy, why? Aren't we living fine over here? Your dad's drug company was bought out, and all the researchers are going to work in the new lab, so our family will have to move there too. Mommy, can we not move? Alice suddenly thought of her agreement with the dragon. Alice, my baby, you've grown up, be good. It can't be helped, but, mommy, be good, baby. Don't be sad when you can come over to see your former classmates more often in the future. Come and wipe your mouth clean. The school bus is coming. Hurry up and go. Alice picked up her cute little school bag and walked towards the outside with a small beak. In her heart, she was secretly worried that in case the giant dragon came, what would she do if he couldn't find her at that time? 
With the emergence of strong mythical creatures like the giant dragon, the major consortium seemed to see their hope for immortality and invested huge sums of money in establishing or acquiring large drug companies. All the researchers stopped the research projects they were working on and began to focus their research on the dragons. Thus, within a short period of time, a new discipline quickly arose, Megalosaurus life science. The flesh, scales, and armor from the dragon's injuries were collected and placed in the instruments of the major laboratories. And in a short period of time, through the study of these blood and flesh, a series of promising research results were obtained. For a period of time, it made the major consortia feel sincerely surprised. They seemed to see hope. The researchers discovered that the cells of the dragons seemed to be able to divide indefinitely. It wasn't like ordinary cells, which could only divide a few times before eventually stalling and then aging to death. This may be the secret of dragon's longevity. Its cells were only one-tenth the size of human cells, but the efficiency of its work was far higher than that of humans. It can absorb a large amount of energy, and its cells are very strong and have the ability to evolve. The cells are in the form of crystal-like polygons, and the connection between the cells is very close, making it very difficult to separate them. Dragon's gene has strong aggressiveness. Researchers tried to study the virus that kills dragon cells, but the result is very disappointing. The aggressiveness of dragon's gene is far stronger than the virus. Its strong aggressiveness, even the virus will be corroded by its aggression and finally assimilated. Through the study of the blood of the dragon, the researchers found that the blood of the giant dragon does have the legendary effect. After coating the body, the sword and gun are inferior, and the strength is infinite. Through the cellular research of the experimental body, it was found that after the experimental body was coated with the blood of the giant dragon, the cells of the whole body changed, and there was a hidden tendency to develop towards the cells of the giant dragon. Therefore, Scientists hypothesis that certain genes of the dragon had invaded the organism and quickly replaced the original genes. These genes made the experimental body stronger and had a strong defense ability. The human body seemed to have evolved in some way. Of course, this kind of strength was limited. It could only increase strength by about three times, and it was not an effective defense against thermal weapons. But it did drive the scientists crazy. But sadly, this behavior is powerfully dangerous. With over a hundred experimental subjects, only a few cases were ultimately successful. Most of the experimental subjects were killed by the pain. The pain of this kind of genetic invasion was not something that all people could withstand, and the stronger and more determined the subject was, the higher the success rate would be. This dangerous method of evolution was obviously not acceptable to the consortium. They needed a gentle, efficient evolutionary method that was suitable for all. If the research was successful, perhaps the entire world would be in their hands. Their wealth would grow exponentially. Ten days later, to the bewilderment of all the researchers, they were very frustrated to find that all the dragon cells in the culture slowly lost their activity and gradually died. No matter how they were cultured and treated, it was still the same result. The entire Megalosaurus research program entered a stagnant stage. The entire world was suddenly in a dark tide. Chapter 90 the hidden power. There exists a group of people in the world unknown to the general public. They possess immense power, far exceeding that of ordinary individuals. However, they are very low-key, never revealing their identities in public. They have their own secretive circle, shrouded in mystery, making it impossible for ordinary people to truly understand their lives. They live among ordinary people, going to work and coming home each day. In their free time, they might visit a bar for a drink. They are as busy as anyone else daily. If they do not display their strength, others would never realize that they possess such tremendous power. Perhaps you would never know that your neighbor could be a martial arts master capable of tearing you apart with a mere gesture, someone with whom you might have had a heated argument. This is a circle of the strong. With the rapid advancement of technology and the invention of powerful weapons, these individuals have gone into hiding. As times progressed, they found themselves increasingly incompatible with the era. Powerful weapons can easily kill them. A martial artist who hasn't reached the earth level can hardly withstand the attack of modern weapons. Regardless of their strength or power, a single bullet could effortlessly end their life. Reaching the earth level is a mere aspiration for most martial artists. The scarcity of spiritual energy on earth has made cultivation extremely difficult. Many spend their entire lives in the human level. On earth, the earth level is synonymous with mastery. These individuals no longer seek dominance, but rather aim for immunity to disease and extended longevity. 
A human-level martial artist can almost be disease-free and live up to 150 years, the natural limit for ordinary humans. If someone with good aptitude works hard and luckily reaches the earth level, their body would break through certain limits, evolving to allow a lifespan of up to 250 years. Moreover, if a person is exceptionally gifted and reaches the small heaven level, they could potentially live for five centuries or 500 years. However, those who achieve the small heaven level on earth can be counted on one hand. Reaching this level requires talent, effort, and even serendipitous encounters. Their breakthroughs are full of uncertainties. As for the great heaven level, it may as well be a myth, as no human has ever reached this level. In the era of cold weapons, a small heaven level master could rampage unchallenged, doing as they please, even establishing a country with ease. Only those of the same level could balance their power. But now, in this so-called age of decline, a stray grenade could annihilate them, turning years of arduous cultivation into ashes. Though they possess formidable power, their bodies lack the dragon's robust defense. Regardless of their strength, they are vulnerable and powerless before the might of the state. So, the circle of martial artists remains extremely low-key, forced into hiding. However, today, this seemingly stagnant circle is experiencing dramatic upheaval. Dragons, regardless of the mythology, be it Western dragons or Eastern dragons, are always seen as powerful beings. They symbolize immense strength. For martial artists, dragons represent hope for a breakthrough in their abilities. The scarcity of spiritual energy has led to a shortage of rare treasures. Modern industrial development has caused devastating environmental damage, making those already rare treasures almost extinct. The appearance of a dragon, while astonishing, also brings a glimmer of hope to these martial artists. Every part of a dragon is valuable. Dragon blood, dragon meat, dragon liver, dragon heart. Each one is a rare treasure. Perhaps consuming just a piece of dragon meat could help them break through their long stagnant cultivation. The title of Dragon Slayer is both magnificent and sacred. With only one dragon in the world, Slaying it could ensure one's name is etched in history, potentially becoming another legend centuries later. Consequently, all martial artists who consider themselves powerful enough, or incredibly lucky, are eager to try. They are ambitious, sharpening their swords in preparation. While the human world prepares to hunt the dragon, our dragon, Brandon Drake, is napping in his lair. The spiritual energy here is far inferior to that on the mysterious island, making cultivation inefficient. Brandon Drake decides to relax. Although cultivation doesn't cause fatigue, the lack of sleep over a long period is unbearable. Since his reincarnation as a lizard, Brandon Drake hasn't slept, spending every night in cultivation. The prolonged lack of sleep has left him mentally exhausted, so he convinces himself to take a good rest. It has been nearly 20 days since Brandon secretly returned to the Snake Valley. The past days have been peaceful, which pleases him greatly. He enjoys this period of tranquility. Brandon is a peace-loving dragon and detests killing without reason. A peaceful life is what he truly enjoys. He couldn't help but admire his own wisdom. Perhaps humans still don't realize that he has quietly returned to the Snake Valley. The most dangerous place is often the safest. Proud of his cleverness, Brandon chuckles softly. However, even a soft chuckle from a dragon sounds thunderous. Angela, who was carrying a giant crocodile into the lair, was startled by the eerie laughter. The crocodile, placed on a large leaf, fell to the ground, covered in dust despite its aromatic, grilled exterior. Angela quickly realized her mistake and let out a scream, hastily kneeling to apologize. Brandon Daydream was abruptly interrupted by her scream, causing him immense displeasure. His voice boomed like rolling thunder through the cave. Human, you are the most foolish maid I've ever seen. Take the food out and redo it. Angela's eyes reddened with extreme grievance, her nose stinging and tears welling up. She struggled to hold back her tears as she hurriedly picked up the giant crocodile and rushed outside, tears streaming down her face. Chapter 91 Energy Crystals Though Angela was only 16 or 17 years old, she had trained her battle energy to the first level, making it easy for her to carry a crocodile. She gently placed the crocodile on a giant leaf, then wiped her eyes but the more she wiped, the more tears flowed. Angela had been treated like a princess since childhood and had never faced such hardships. The more she thought about it, the more she cried. After a while, she finally managed to stop. Suddenly, she screamed, hoisted the crocodile, 
and ran towards the river, fearing she would be scolded if she didn't hurry. She quickly washed the roasted crocodile and ran towards the distant crowd. Although the dragons didn't eat it, her companions were eager for it. Her companions, to save time, didn't bother with roasting. They started their day with some raw meat, then began their training. Day after day passed, and as the one-month deadline approached, they grew more anxious. Angela placed the food next to them without disturbing them and hurried back. She still had a lot of work to do. The smell of the food distracted them from their training, and one by one, they opened their eyes, exchanged glances, and sighed simultaneously. Their dark circles looked comical, but none of them were in the mood to laugh. The immense pressure left them with no desire for humor. They all looked at the roasted crocodile, their eyes gleaming green, and their mouths watering uncontrollably. They hadn't had cooked food for nearly half a month, subsisting on fruits and raw meat, their stomachs churning with acid. They looked haggard, with disheveled hair and beards that hadn't been shaved for days, resembling beggars from a slum, a far cry from their previous handsome and spirited selves. Ten minutes later, the huge crocodile was reduced to a pile of white bones, the eating process akin to a war. Sigh. Othello, how's your training going? Do you feel close to a breakthrough? The pressure on me is getting worse, and I can't focus on my training. I feel like I'm about to collapse, Cindy said with a bitter face, lightly sighing. Almost there, but I don't know when I'll break through. I thought I was working hard before, but compared to now, it feels like I was on vacation, Othello said looking haggard but in good spirits, feeling he was close to a breakthrough. Silence followed. Klein, among so many people, only your spirit seems the best. Have you broken through? I notice that with my strength, I can hardly see through you anymore. Augustus glanced at Klein, noticing he didn't seem worried, his face dirty but with a hint of joy in his eyes, and couldn't help but ask. Just broke through. Klein said, trying to suppress his excitement but his eyes betrayed his joy. My God, you actually broke through? Congratulations, congratulations. Though they congratulated him, their dry smiles appeared even more bitter, and the pressure in their hearts grew more intense. Though they were all congratulating him, their dry smiles only made the bitterness in their hearts more evident, and the pressure on them grew even more. Augustus remained silent, but his mind was in turmoil. As the future hope of the church, he couldn't allow himself to fall behind others, even in terms of breakthrough speed. He was the best, he screamed inwardly. His prideful heart made the pressure on him greater than on anyone else. Although his fighting chi was at the peak of the third level, just a step away from the fourth, this seemingly simple step had ended the careers of countless warriors. Once he crossed it, he would become a rare earth-level master, garnering respect or fear from others and enjoying a long lifespan. But if he failed, he would remain a mediocre warrior. This single step marked a world of difference. Suddenly, it felt like there was nothing left to say. Apart from Klein, everyone was filled with a sense of urgency. In unspoken agreement, they each walked away to train in silence. Klein was stunned for a moment, then sighed inwardly. He too had no reason to be happy. Thinking about the upcoming month, not knowing how many companions would be executed, he felt a pang of sorrow. Although he hadn't gotten along well with the others before, often quarreling, their shared hardships over this period had made them like grasshoppers tied to the same rope, fostering a sense of camaraderie and greatly improving their relationships. He found a corner and began to train. Even though he had already broken through, he wanted to share the hardships with his companions. Brandon shook his body and began to slowly crawl out of the cave, pondering the safety of Snake Valley. He had found many useful methods in his memories. For example, building a massive magic array in Snake Valley to fortify its defenses. This array could slowly absorb the energy of the heavens and the earth, providing automatic defense against attacks. The longer it stood, the stronger its defenses would become. But this plan was clearly unfeasible due to the enormous engineering required and the need for a large amount of energy crystals. So far, Brandon had only found one of the shiny crystals from his memories, the colorful gem in the hilt of a sword, which was a top-grade energy crystal. According to his memories, these energy crystals were crucial for training, magic arrays, and powerful magic weapons. Without them, most methods were rendered useless. However, having just one crystal was practically useless. At least two were needed. With two, a simple teleportation array could be set up. In case of a human attack, even if they couldn't win, the creatures of Snake Valley could escape safely. 
But where could he find the second crystal? Ah, the more of these shiny things, the better. Suddenly, a thought flashed through his mind. Shiny things, yes, that pearl. Brandon remembered the pearl he had taken from the sea monster. He realized it resembled something from his memories. He hurried back into the cave to find the pearl. Soon, he found it in the deep pit where he had been lying. Carefully picking it up, he examined it closely. It emitted a white light, and the interior was invisible, appearing like a ball of light. The more he looked at it, the more familiar it seemed. A name from his memory surfaced, Energy Crystal Essence. Unexpectedly, this pearl, which showed no signs of power, was actually a rare energy crystal essence. Typically, such essences randomly appeared in the core of super-large energy crystal mines. Unlike ordinary energy crystals, the essence emitted no power fluctuations, appearing just like a ball of light, but it contained terrifying energy. Energy crystal essences were usually stable and extremely hard. Only special methods could extract the energy within. Additionally, they had a unique property. No matter how much energy was absorbed, as long as it didn't exceed its limit, it would automatically absorb energy from the heavens and the earth to slowly recover. Even in the memories of divine beings, such crystals were extremely precious. Brandon's eyes gleamed with intense golden light as he stared at the pearl. Oh, it was an energy crystal essence. Just a few days ago, he had been a downtrodden beggar dragon, and now he discovered he had a priceless treasure at home. He was ecstatic. This time, he had truly hit the jackpot. Chapter 92 Planetary Teleportation Array Brandon was exhilarated, and it took him quite a while to calm down. As he examined the pearl again, his eyes glowed with golden light. With these two energy crystals, he could now create a teleportation array. According to his memories, teleportation arrays were generally categorized into planetary teleportation arrays, star system teleportation arrays, interstellar teleportation arrays, and dimensional teleportation arrays. Planetary teleportation arrays were the simplest, while the specifics of dimensional teleportation arrays were vague even in the divine memory. Brandon guessed that even the unfortunate deity didn't fully understand them. A planetary teleportation array, as the name implies, is limited to teleportation within a single planet. Though simple to divine beings, it was incredibly complex to Brandon. Even with the dragon's inheritance, giving him some understanding of magic arrays, the complexity of this array left him dizzy. The inherited knowledge provided basic principles and rules of magic arrays. It was like knowing the rules of chess without necessarily being a skilled player. To construct a teleportation array, at least two arrays were needed. Without a pair, teleportation wouldn't work. During teleportation, the array emits certain waves to locate the other array. If it encounters an array with the same frequency, the two arrays resonate. Through resonance, they automatically activate and teleport. Brandon planned to build one array in Snake Valley and another on the small island in the sea. This way, the creatures of Snake Valley would be much safer. As the saying goes, even a crafty rabbit has three burrows. How much more so for a wise dragon, Brandon thought. Having made up his mind, Brandon began studying the planetary teleportation array in detail. The magic array appeared incredibly complex, and he couldn't understand the function of each line. The dense network of lines resembled an integrated circuit, making Brandon's head spin. Fortunately, Brandon didn't need to understand everything. As long as he grasped the general concept, he could replicate the array from his memory. A few days later, Brandon emerged from the cave, his head swimming. Such intellectual work didn't suit him. It felt like he had been living a nightmare. Initially, he found magic arrays fascinating and magical. But gradually, he became dizzy, and by the end, just looking at the complex lines made him nauseous. Brandon sighed, realizing he lacked the talent to be a scholar. Even with a dragon's brain, his intelligence hadn't increased much. Simplicity and brute force were more his style. However, the past few days of study hadn't been in vain. He had made some progress and understood the basics. Following the memory should prevent major problems. Carving a teleportation array isn't just drawing a few lines on the ground. It requires magic powder or blood rich in magic. Magic powder was out of the question for Brandon. Its primary ingredient was powdered energy crystals, and he only had two, both high grade. He couldn't afford to waste them. Brandon had no shortage of magical blood. Both his own and that of the beasts were rich in magical energy. Given his size, donating a few tons of blood wouldn't be a problem. However, the teleportation array had to be hidden. If humans discovered and destroyed it, 
all the blood would be wasted. Brandon pondered this carefully. With a roar, Brandon's metallic dragon cry echoed through the valley. In no time, several beasts came running. Brandon wasn't alone anymore. The beasts, often idle, needed something to do. He assigned Skylar to handle logistics and prepare food while he led the beasts toward the nearby peak. This tall, snow-capped mountain stood out in the tropical rainforest. Though Brandon hadn't explored it much since moving to the Snake Valley, he sensed it wasn't ordinary. Today, however, was not for exploration. Gradually, Brandon led the beasts over a small peak and down the slope. They moved quickly, reaching a canyon about 10 kilometers from the Snake Valley in just a few minutes. The canyon, around 100 meters wide and 6 to 700 meters deep, stretched for kilometers. Brandon had discovered it while flying. The steep, sparse canyon was damp and dark, with the wind creating a haunting howl. The ground was covered with loose, mossy rocks, and a few unknown soft-bodied worms crawled, leaving shiny trails. It was a perfect hidden base. With Brandon's command, the massive excavation began. His plan was to hollow out a mountainside of the canyon to create a base for the teleportation array, connecting it to the deep pool of Snake Valley. While he could dig out his valley, it was too close and risked human discovery. Brandon wouldn't take such a risk for convenience. The beasts dug from the canyon bottom, creating a tunnel towards the mountain. The terrain was mostly rock, making Goldie the best digger among the beasts. The five giant serpents, lacking claws, were ineffective with the hard rock and were relegated to transporting debris. Goldie, like a giant excavator, effortlessly broke through the rock with its powerful claws. With its earth-level strength and robust body, the rock shattered like brittle cookies. The scene was chaotic, with dust and debris falling as the mountain trembled. After half a day, Brandon and Goldie had hollowed out a vast space inside the mountain. The hollowed-out area formed a circular space, about 2 kilometers in diameter and 15 meters high. It was spacious, and the ground was flattened as Brandon had requested. He felt very satisfied with the progress. Just as Brandon was about to continue digging, he heard Skylar's call from outside. His face darkened as it seemed there was trouble back in the Snake Valley. Chapter 93 The Runaway Slave As the one-month deadline approached, everyone except Klein felt the mounting pressure. This immense pressure was beyond the comprehension of ordinary people because, if they failed to break through by the deadline, they only had a few days left to live. Unlike patients given a death notice, who are often hopeless due to terminal illness, these individuals still had a sliver of hope. Though this hope was very faint, they had to cling to it. Terminal patients might use their remaining time to enjoy things they hadn't before, doing activities they previously didn't have time for. As their death date approached, though terrifying, they could face it with relative calm. But for them, it was different. That faint hope, though minuscule, had to be seized. They trained relentlessly, barely taking time to eat. Yet as the days passed, their hope grew dimmer. Finally, on the third day before the deadline, Odyssey broke through to the third level. The rest of the group, already on the edge, crumbled under the pressure. They began to wait for death, unable to focus on training due to the immense stress. Augustus's face was grim. Despite all his training, he showed no signs of breaking through. His face was ashen and bloodless, his once handsome features now pallid. His proud heart was shattered by reality, and he had lost his confidence. Staring blankly at the sky, long periods without sleep and the immense mental pressure had left him utterly exhausted. He was beginning to despair. Seeing Odyssey and Klein's excited expressions nearby, a surge of inexplicable resentment and jealousy filled his heart. Cindy was still training furiously, having not eaten for three days. His pallor indicated he had not yet broken through. Could it be that in four days, he would die? No, absolutely not. Augustus resolved inwardly, my fate is mine to decide, not heaven's. Even if it means risking everything, I can't just wait for death. I must escape. He decided it was better to risk fleeing this devil's lair than to stay and wait for death, however slim the chance of success might be. Having made up his mind, Augustus stopped training. He needed to rest and gather his strength for the escape. He tore off a piece of raw meat and stuffed it into his mouth. It was from a deer carcass left out since the morning, now starting to rot and surrounded by swarming insects. After nearly a month of eating raw meat, he had grown accustomed to its taste no longer feeling the initial disgust. The venison, now a dark purple, was placed into his mouth. Slowly chewing, the blood juice slid down his throat and into his stomach. 
He suddenly realized that raw meat tasted quite good. Apart from the slight fishiness and certain odors, it was exceptionally tender and delicious. His eyes continually scanned his surroundings, meticulously searching for an escape route. Although he had looked countless times, he still examined the area carefully again and again. If any part of the escape plan failed, it would all be for nothing. A gigantic gorilla was dozing next to the cave, emitting thunderous snores. Several strange, massive snakes were lazily sunbathing by the deep pool. A large bluebird was likely hunting in the forest. As for the dragon, he hadn't seen it for several days. The terrifying demon seemed to be sleeping in the cave. Augustus felt there was no hope of escape. If he ran even a kilometer, the valley's snakes would be alarmed, revealing his location. He would be torn apart by the beasts. Augustus had rehearsed the escape many times, and each time it ended in a deadlock. There was no hope. He had grown desperate and began praying to God, more sincerely than ever before. Although he was a priest with a lofty position in the church, his belief in God had always been shallow, more a solace for his soul. He knew many priests didn't believe in God's existence. To them, being a priest was just a job. But in this moment, he was devout. God was only sought in times of greatest need. The next day, Augustus found that God had indeed manifested a miracle. All the giant beasts followed the dragon outside, and even the blue bird flew away after a while. It was a miracle. Augustus contained his excitement, feeling more confident than ever. He believed God was by his side, and he was certain he would succeed this time. The other priests were training together. Cindy, with her eyes closed, hadn't woken up. Augustus hesitated but ultimately decided not to take Cindy with him. With her level 2 strength, she would be a burden and drastically reduce his chances of success. He also chose to ignore the other two priests who had already broken through. In this life and death moment, human nature's ugliness was laid bare. Augustus glanced at his companions with contempt. As a young elite, he had always felt superior. His usual humility and friendliness were mere social masks. He made up his mind. He lay down, pressing his ear to the ground. The vibrations from the beast's movements grew fainter and more distant. It seemed the beasts had indeed left the valley. He scanned the surroundings again, then crouched low and quietly moved towards the outside. After covering two kilometers, everything was going smoothly. He swiftly killed any attacking snakes with his peak human-level strength. In a valley without the giant beasts, ordinary snakes were no match for him. He gradually stopped hiding, running swiftly towards the outside. He had never felt so fast before. His heart pounded as if it would burst from his chest, filled with immense excitement. His face flushed as he ran faster, the dense forest retreating behind him. He easily killed any obstructing giant snakes. But before he got far, the forest ahead shook. Trees moved aside as a strong fishy wind blew in his face. Soon, a python as thick as a barrel came rushing towards him. Chapter 94 Escape from the Deadly Valley Augustus shivered but sighed in relief once his eyes adjusted. It wasn't one of those strange giant snakes with horns. He gripped the sword hilt tightly, energy coursing through his body. He knew that to escape, he first had to defeat this giant snake. Augustus recognized it. It seemed to be one of the beast's subordinates. He couldn't let it alert the others, or everything would be over. If he wanted to survive, he had to kill it quickly. With a low shout, he raised his greatsword, energy faintly flowing through it, and charged at the giant snake. His strength had increased significantly since he first arrived in the Snake Valley. Although he hadn't truly broken through to Earth level yet, he was infinitely close. The snake was enormous but showed no energy fluctuations just an ordinary beast. The giant snake had started cultivating, but it had been too short a time. Most of its energy was absorbed by its body to nourish the damages from forced bloodline enhancement. There wasn't much energy left, not even enough to reach level 1. However, the powerful bodies of magical beasts gave them immense combat strength, often allowing them to challenge stronger opponents. Augustus rapidly approached the giant snake. The closer he got, the more he felt its menace. The snake's massive tail whipped towards him, but its speed was no threat. He deftly dodged the attacks, maneuvering his body like a butterfly weaving through flowers, making the snake dizzy. Seizing a gap, Augustus raised his greatsword high and slashed at the snake's body. With a sharp hiss, the energy-infused blade, far more lethal than an ordinary weapon, shattered the scales that could even deflect bullets. 
The sword broke through the armor and cut into the flesh. The snake's muscles, stimulated by the pain, suddenly contracted, and the sword could go no further. As Augustus tried to pull the sword out, the snake's body thrashed wildly, flinging him away, leaving the sword embedded in its body. For a viper as thick as a barrel, such wounds were minor, but the intense pain drove it into a frenzy. The terrifying, grotesque head let out a roar, its massive jaws opening wide. Nearly transparent fangs dripped viscous venom, the drops hitting the ground with a sizzle, emitting puffs of green smoke. The venom was clearly highly corrosive. Augustus smelled a sweet scent in the air, feeling a bit dizzy. His fighting chi automatically circulated, clearing his head slightly. Just as he regained focus, the snake's massive head lunged at him, a chill running down his spine. He shot away swiftly. The snake's terrifying venom filled him with dread, killing his will to fight. He ran desperately, praying silently. He hoped that when the dragon noticed his escape, he would be far from this horrifying forest. The energy within his body surged rapidly, and his running speed increased, gradually leaving behind a blur. Intense fear pushed him to unleash his full potential. His fighting chi, which had long been stagnant, began to progress slowly in this critical moment, inching towards the earth level. He, however, remained oblivious to this change. He continued to run at top speed, gradually losing the sound of the giant serpent behind him. The dense forest around him sped past as he ran out of the Serpent Valley, but he didn't dare stop. He had to keep running. He had no idea how long he had been running or how far he had gone. He just kept running, his heart filled with fear. He didn't know what else he could do but run, for only constant running could dispel the unease in his heart. Gradually, his feet lost all feeling, and he ran mechanically like a puppet. A loud voice roared in his mind, Run! Run! He had no idea where he was. Slowly, the forest began to disappear, and he saw a small village in the distance. A few pedestrians on the road stared at him curiously, his heart filled with wild joy. He had finally returned to the world of the living from the depths of hell. The intense emotional fluctuation overwhelmed him, and he could no longer support himself. His vision darkened, and he felt dizzy. With a thud, he collapsed to the ground. Listening to Skylar's report, Brandon's face was grim. He hurried back to the Serpent Valley, deploying all the serpents to search the entire forest. But after a day, they still found nothing. That damned human had actually escaped. Brandon blamed himself for being too careless. It seemed he had grossly underestimated humans. He hadn't taken them seriously at all. He had left them in the Serpent Valley to fend for themselves, never considering monitoring them. His blind arrogance had led to his downfall. Initially, Brandon thought that even if they tried to escape, they wouldn't get out of the Serpent Valley. The valley was full of giant beasts that weren't just for show. Gradually, the seemingly impenetrable Serpent Valley and the seemingly docile humans had lulled him into a false sense of security. Today, he had sent all the giant beasts to dig tunnels, leaving none to guard the valley. It was a huge mistake. Although Skylar was in the valley, he had tasked her with hunting. The more Brandon thought about it, the more annoyed he became. With the human escape, the Serpent Valley would be fully exposed, and his presence in the valley would soon be known worldwide. The two humans he had previously let go would also be exposed, but Brandon didn't care much about them. After all, he had no emotional ties to them. They had some value, but it hadn't been realized yet, so losing them wasn't a big deal to him. The key issue was that once the Serpent Valley was exposed, humans would flock to it, making it uninhabitable. The relocation of the Serpent Valley had become urgent and time-critical. Now, he had to race against time to move the giant beasts to an overseas island before the humans attacked. Chapter 95 Urgency During the next period, Brandon quickly signed contracts with all the humans in the Snake Valley. He was a bit annoyed that the remaining humans had all broken through, which left Brandon with no one to vent his anger on. At the last moment, Cindy also managed to break through which was quite a relief. The excavation work proceeded smoothly. In three days and nights, Brandon and a few other giant beasts dug a tunnel over 10 kilometers long underground. The tunnel connected to the deep pool in the Snake Valley, hidden by a large boulder. When humans attacked, the beasts could lift the boulder and escape down the stream to the canyon. Although the work was going well and the excavation speed was fast, Brandon still felt an increasing sense of urgency and unease. Three days had passed, and he knew the humans would arrive soon. 
Time was running out. Brandon hadn't slept for three days. His dragon eyes, as bright as searchlights, were bloodshot from the pressure that weighed on him like a massive stone. The humans, after signing the contracts, had become noticeably more obedient. Despite their small stature, they were quite strong, quick with their hands, ate little, and worked hard. Brandon found their assistance quite useful. They had helped a lot. In the canyon, beside an oval-shaped enormous space, there was a large stone mortar filled with thick, fresh blood, roughly estimated at four or five tons. The giant ape and the five giant pythons lay exhausted on the ground, unwilling to move. They had bled profusely today. Despite their size, giant beasts didn't have much blood. Each had shed a quarter of their blood. Several humans stood on the mortar, each holding a wooden stick, continuously stirring the blood. The thick blood was hard to stir. Brandon lay on the ground his huge claw constantly carving on the smooth stone floor. The hard rock under his dragon claws was like tofu, easily sliced into deep lines. Brandon continued to carve, and soon the smooth ground was filled with intricate patterns made up of straight and curved lines. The patterns interlocked and connected, becoming dizzying if looked at for too long. The humans, while stirring the blood, watched the dragon carve with fervent eyes. After half a day, a huge magic array, with a diameter of about a hundred meters, was finally completed. The complex lines formed a complete design. Brandon stretched his massive body, feeling sore from lying on the ground. After carefully comparing it to the teleportation array in his mind and finding no mistakes, he stood up, satisfied. He picked up the sword hilt lying nearby, a relic Brandon had found in an abandoned temple when he was still a small lizard. The hilt was silver white, seemingly made of some alloy. At its base, a multicolored crystal gleamed brightly. Brandon gazed at it for a moment, feeling a slight pang of reluctance. He sighed and pried the crystal out of the hilt. Holding the radiant crystal, he placed it into a groove at the center of the magic array. Then he instructed the humans to pour the blood from the stone mortar into the channels of the array. The lines of the magic array, etched by Brandon's enormous claws, were about 10 centimeters wide resembling small trenches. A massive amount of blood slowly flowed through the channels, gradually filling the entire array. As the last line was finally soaked in blood, the magic array emitted a faint energy ripple, and a dazzling light radiated from its center. The intense light made Brandon blink involuntarily. After a second, the light vanished as if it had never appeared. Now, the entire array emitted wave-like energy ripples, radiating outward in concentric circles. Brandon knew this was the array's frequency, which could be adjusted by repositioning the energy crystal. Only when the frequencies of two arrays matched would the teleportation activate. Brandon memorized this frequency and taught the usage of the teleportation array to the beasts and the four humans. Since the humans had switched sides, Brandon saw no reason to discriminate against them. Despite being coerced, their loyalty was unquestionable. Having signed demonic contracts, their very souls belonged to Brandon leaving no room for mistrust. Moreover, their intelligence surpassed that of the beasts. The five giant pythons, despite their lack of limbs, were treated equally by Brandon, who always maintained fairness. With the teleportation array completed, Brandon's unease intensified, his intuition warning him of imminent danger. Suppressing his anxiety, he gave thorough instructions to the beasts and humans to retreat into the mountain and await the array's activation if any danger arose. Ignoring his physical and mental exhaustion, Brandon hastily left Snake Valley, heading towards the coast. He needed to reach the island in the sea to set up another teleportation array. Brandon dashed through the jungle at high speed, his massive body like a moving hill. Trees fell in his path as he barreled straight ahead. His urgency spurred him to run faster his body becoming a blur. Time equaled victory, a lesson Brandon now fully grasped. As Brandon charged through the dense forest, a straight path formed. A previously unmarked jungle now had a clear trail, but Brandon paid no attention to his achievement. Two hours later, he plunged into a wide river, swimming swiftly towards the sea. Water, water, oh, handsome young man, you've finally woken up. Augustus slowly opened his eyes, squinting slightly from the bright light. He found himself in a hospital, surrounded by white walls. A middle-aged nurse with brown skin seemed delighted to see him awake. Oh, handsome young man, you've been unconscious for a whole day. It's wonderful you've woken up. I'll get the doctor. Before Augustus could respond, 
The slightly chubby nurse ran out excitedly. Looking around the room, Augustus saw the sunlight streaming through the clear windows, and he could almost smell the sunshine. A sense of relief spread from his heart. He had finally escaped. He was safe. Thinking back to everything in Dragon Valley felt like a nightmare. At last, he was free from torment. The dragon would pay for this. A cruel smile crept onto his handsome face. Chapter 96 Prehistoric Remains The church was no longer an option. The Pope's actions had deeply disappointed him. The Pope needed the dragon, needing its cooperation to elevate the church's prestige. The church would never attack the dragon for him and his companions. If he returned to the church and disclosed what happened, at best, he'd be placed under house arrest. And with Kevin now loyal to the dragon, his terrifying power would make it impossible to withstand even one strike. Returning to the church was a clear path to death. He felt the fighting chi surging inside him, surprised and thrilled to discover he had reached the earth level. Dragon, just wait. You'll regret not killing me. Augustus jumped out of bed, swiftly leaping out the window. The seven or eight story drop was nothing to an earth level expert. He landed heavily, the ground cracking slightly under his feet. Ignoring the numbness in his legs, he chose a direction and ran. He was broke and couldn't pay the bill anyway. The next day, at the U.S. National Security Department, the place was bustling, phones ringing nonstop. Several operators juggled multiple calls, speaking rapidly and taking notes continuously. Oh, good day, sir. What? You saw a UFO? Where and when? We'll dispatch a team immediately to investigate. Yes, don't worry. We'll be there soon. Have a good rest. The operator hung up one call and picked up another. Oh, ma'am. What can I do for you? Your cat is missing? Don't worry, maybe it's just rummaging in a nearby trash can. Oh, sorry. I mean, keep looking, you'll find it. Be patient. Okay? Have a nice day. The operator barely had time to take a sip of water before another call came in. He cursed under his breath, but then put on a bright smile. Hello, sir. You saw a dragon? Oh, that's not a new one. We've had several calls about dragon sightings recently. Oh, come on. Everyone says that. Where and when did you see it? We'll send a team to investigate right away. You say you're a white bishop of the Vatican and need to speak to my superior about an urgent matter? All right, all right. Please hold on. Within a day, the message was passed up through the ranks. On the third day, at the White House, a middle-aged man hurried towards the president's office, clutching a file. Come in. The president's deep voice called. Mr. President, the information has been confirmed. Our satellites have detected large creatures in the Andes Mountains including that giant green bird. These are satellite images. The middle-aged man placed the folder down, spreading the clear photos across the president's desk. The images made even the usually composed president stand up in surprise. Oh, what is this? Kong? Oh my god, such a huge snake. How can such enormous creatures exist in this world? Mr. President, since the green bird was spotted there, it's likely the dragon is too. This time they won't escape. The middle-aged man said softly. The president, taken aback, quickly regained his composure. All right, John, you can go now. I need to think this over. The man named John turned and left, gently closing the door behind him, leaving the office quiet once more. The president stared at the photos, his brow furrowed. A single giant beast could be a coincidence, but the repeated appearance of massive creatures indicated something unusual about the place. Humankind had started exploring space, yet they still didn't fully understand Earth. Many of Earth's mysteries remained unexplained, even with today's technology. He remembered his visit to Area 51 shortly after taking office. The experience was unforgettable, filled with strange and marvelous things that left him in awe. Prehistoric spacecraft, mysterious minerals, divine chariots, powerful weapons, all played a significant role in maintaining America's technological edge. If these mountains contained mythical dragons and other giant creatures, there must be a prehistoric site there, something America had to acquire. With that thought, he picked up a secure phone. Thirty minutes later, a large combat group was dispatched to a certain mountain range in the Amazon. In Snake Valley, Kong left some humans to guard the teleportation array while he and several giant beasts, weakened from blood loss, wobbled out of the canyon towards Snake Valley. They were weak from the massive blood loss and needed to return quickly to prepare for the impending human attack as their king had warned. Through several clashes, Kong and the others had come to understand human strength. Their powerful weapons hurt when they struck. But Kong couldn't understand why, despite their power,
the king feared these weapons so much. Upon returning to Snake Valley, they needed to relocate many snakes. The sacred tree by the waterfall was a treasure and couldn't be allowed to fall into human hands. Brandon spent half a day underwater, getting lost several times along the way, but eventually, he managed to find his way. Climbing onto a small island, he immediately spread his wings and flew towards the subdragon's nest. As his strength increased, Brandon could vaguely sense a unique magnetic wave covering the entire area. He also noticed that no ships or planes ever passed through this space. He recalled that during his last visit to the island, he hadn't been detected, but as soon as he flew out of this area, he was inexplicably attacked. It seemed this sea region was very mysterious. Technology couldn't detect him here, so he felt safe. Suddenly, he thought of a place, Bermuda. The more he looked around, the more he felt this place resembled Bermuda, with its hot climate similar to the latitude temperature of Bermuda. Ten minutes later, Brandon arrived at the subdragon's nest. The subdragon was at the entrance of the cave, repeatedly licking its wounds. Nearly a month had passed since their last encounter, and the subdragon had grown to over six meters in length, becoming much stronger. It seemed those flame fruits had significantly aided its development. Chapter 97 The Young Subdragon's Memories Since the great deity left, the young subdragon resumed living alone. In the vast, empty nest, it felt very lonely. It suddenly remembered its mother and its past life. As for its father, the young subdragon had never seen him since birth. Its mother was a powerful subdragon. In the young subdragon's heart, she was the strongest, with her massive body, strong muscles, and thick scales. She could catch the most delicious food. No matter how powerful the prey was, it would be torn apart under her giant claws. Those were the happiest days of its life. Apart from clinging to its mother, it spent its days playing and sleeping without worrying about food. But one day, it could no longer find its mother. She went out hunting and never returned, leaving the young subdragon alone. The forest was full of dangers, with huge beasts everywhere. Its nightmare began. It dared not go out to hunt, and gradually, the remaining food was eaten up. There was nothing left in the cave to fill its stomach. The roars of wild beasts outside were terrifying. The young subdragon could only shiver in the empty nest. The sky gradually darkened. Hunger became increasingly unbearable. It gnawed on bare bones left from previous meals, but these bones only provided a little comfort, not real sustenance. Finally, the five-meter-long young subdragon gathered enough courage to crawl outside hoping to find a heap of meat waiting for it. The forest at night was exceptionally frightening, with lightning and thunder outside. Huge lightning bolts occasionally struck down from the sky. The young subdragon trembled, its eyes filled with fear as it watched the massive lightning. Every rustle made it shiver with fright. It cautiously walked forward, every step taken with extreme care. It mimicked the hunting moves its mother had taught it, crawling forward step by step. Tall shrubs suddenly rustled, and several green glows emerged from the grass. They saw the little subdragon, and greed gleamed in their green eyes. A few rats surrounded the little subdragon. These rats were familiar. The powerful mother had hunted them before. Once, near the nest, dozens of rats appeared and surrounded the mother. However, those rats were no match for her. She tore them to pieces effortlessly. With a gentle sweep of her enormous tail, many rats were killed and that meal ended up being rat meat. She didn't like their meat at all, it was sour and bitter. But now, hunger gnawed at the little subdragon's belly, and it seemed there was no choice but to prey on these pesky creatures. Considering their small size, it should be easy to kill them. However, these rats were incredibly agile. The little subdragon found that many of the moves learned from its mother were useless. What were mere annoyances to the mother were formidable adversaries for the little subdragon. Its wounds increased, and blood flowed steadily from its body. The annoying rats seized every opportunity to bite. The little subdragon felt it was nearing its limit, thinking it might die. At this critical moment, a deity finally appeared. The deity had heard its call and manifested before it, saving the little subdragon. The deity was immensely powerful, with gleaming purple gold scales. Its huge body made it hard for the little subdragon to breathe. Though the deity left, it would return. Guarding the deity's nest was the little subdragon's greatest honor. It licked its wounds and silently vowed to itself. Suddenly, it felt the sky darken as if the sun overhead was obscured by something. 
It looked up. Brandon's massive body descended from the sky. He didn't bother acknowledging the little subdragon prostrating itself respectfully on the ground and hurried into the cave, too anxious to speak. The little subdragon's nest was enormous. A huge cavern widened by massive claw marks, spacious enough for a teleportation array. The floor was somewhat uneven, but with some tidying, it could be set up. Due to time constraints, Brandon had no choice but to place the teleportation array here. The uneven ground posed no problem for the mighty dragon. Brandon cast several swamp spells, and the hard ground immediately softened, turning the rock into a muddy slurry. Bubbles surfaced as the magic took effect. Once the spell wore off, the ground began to harden again, becoming smooth as glass. Brandon lay on the ground and started inscribing the teleportation array with his claws. Having done this before, he was more experienced and efficient this time. After a few hours, the large teleportation array was complete. He carefully took out the energy crystal and placed it at the array's energy core. Then, using his sharp claws, he cut open an artery, causing a rush of blood to flow out. With no other great beasts around, Brandon had to use his own blood. The thick blood flowed from his body, following the paths of the magic array. Due to his powerful regenerative abilities, Brandon had to injure himself multiple times. A significant amount of thick blood poured from his body, and he felt his strength slowly ebbing away. His body grew weaker, and dizziness overcame him. He could barely stand. It was hard to tell how much time had passed, but suddenly the entire magic array emitted a blinding light. Intense waves of energy radiated from the array, far stronger than the last time. Brandon stopped the bleeding and shakily stood up, feeling a wave of dizziness. His body was completely drained, and the weakness was overwhelming. Brandon adjusted the frequency of the teleportation array to match that of Snake Valley. A few giant beasts returned to Snake Valley, officially initiating the relocation. A massive yellow and black serpent climbed onto a large rock by the pond and let out a loud hiss. The entire forest echoed with rustling sounds, leaves shaking, and a foul wind blowing. All the snakes in Snake Valley, regardless of type, size, or venomous nature, began to converge rapidly toward the noise. Chapter 98 The Sorrow of the Beasts Gradually, more and more snakes gathered in front of the pond, writhing and entangling with each other, forming a dense mass, all responding to the serpent's commands. The area within a few hundred meters of the pond was soon surrounded by all kinds of snakes. Even the giant beasts, including King Kong, hadn't anticipated seeing so many snakes in Snake Valley, where they were usually sparse. Seeing so many snakes together made King Kong's hair stand on end. He turned and climbed toward the cliff. Although these snakes posed no real threat to him, they couldn't pierce his tough skin even if they tried to bite. Seeing such a massive gathering still made him uneasy. King Kong's enormous body was already about a quarter of the cliff's height. After just a few steps, he reached the sacred tree. King Kong had a sense that without this sacred tree, his body wouldn't have undergone such dramatic changes. This tree was his greatest treasure, and even if he left, he would take it with him. To King Kong, the dragon claw blood orchid wasn't tall. It was only the size of his palm. The roots, twisted and entwined like dragon claws, were firmly embedded in a large rock, which was riddled with cracks. King Kong raised his massive fist and smashed the rock into pieces. He uprooted the dragon claw blood orchid along with the rock. Suddenly, Skylar, circling overhead, let out a sharp cry, causing King Kong to look up in confusion. In the distance, tiny dots appeared, growing larger and louder as they approached. Hearing the familiar sound, King Kong remembered the first time the king left. It was accompanied by the same noise. Anger surged through him, and he leapt off the cliff. He placed the small tree down and began pounding his chest with his massive fists, emitting deep roars. The dots grew larger, and King Kong's eyes turned red. His muscles swelled, and thick, black-purple veins snaked across his body. Overwhelmed by rage, he entered a berserk state, completely forgetting Brandon's warning. He roared furiously at the sky. The eyes of the five giant pythons gleamed with a cold, murderous light. Their massive bodies rose up. As the human planes drew closer, Kong picked up a huge rock and hurled it at them. The boulder, over a meter in diameter, was like a pebble in Kong's hand. It spun violently through the air, whistling as it hurtled toward the plane. However, Kong's aim was noticeably off, and the rock traced a graceful arc through the air, 
narrowly missing a plane. The pilot broke into a cold sweat. Command, we've reached the destination. We have visual on a giant bird, a massive gorilla, and eight giant snakes. No dragon spotted. Please advise. Proceed with plan B. Continue searching for the dragon and capture it alive if found. Roger that. The planes gradually flew over Snake Valley, their thunderous roar causing the entire valley to stir. Suddenly, massive missiles, trailing fiery exhaust, were launched from the helicopters. Kong instinctively sensed the danger and quickly dodged to the side. A series of deafening explosions followed, leaving Kong's ears ringing. He felt a numbing pain in his back as the blasts tore his flesh. Turning around, he was enraged to see a green python, its body mangled and nearly severed. The giant python writhed in pain, its blood gushing out rapidly. The redness in Kong's eyes slowly faded, replaced by sorrow. Over time, he had come to see the five giant pythons as companions. Missiles continued to scream through the air, one after another, striking the valley. The serpents in the valley were blown apart, and the air was thick with the stench of blood. Kong saw Skylar's massive form blur into a streak of blue as she folded her wings and straightened her body into a streamlined missile. Her immense rage caused a layer of blue energy to envelop her. Like a bolt of lightning, she shot towards the helicopter. With a tremendous crash, Skylar pierced through the helicopter, sending it spiraling out of control towards the ground. Skylar emitted a sharp cry and then darted towards another helicopter. Her agile movements made it impossible for the planes to lock onto her position. More and more aircraft approached, bullets raining down like a storm towards Skylar. Kong struggled to his feet, the searing pain in his back jolting him back to full awareness. He remembered the king's warning. He let out a thunderous roar, calling his companions to flee for their lives. He grabbed the sacred tree by the pond and leaped into the deep pool, which was over 10 meters deep. Kong's towering body plunged to the bottom in one jump. Beneath the water was a large rock, under which lay a tunnel. After Kong jumped in, several giant pythons followed, and Skylar, a blur of blue, shot into the water. More and more snakes swam towards the pond. Explosions continued to erupt around them, gradually turning the water red. Kong lifted the giant rock, creating a massive whirlpool in the pond, and his body was sucked into the tunnel along with the water. The immense water pressure propelled Kong and the other giant beasts swiftly through the subterranean passage. After traveling a third of the way, the water began to dry up, and the tunnel was not a straight path. It undulated with the terrain's ups and downs. Kong, shivering uncontrollably, took a deep breath. The horrific wound on his back caused him to lose blood rapidly, leaving him increasingly weak and dizzy. He glanced back and noticed only four of the giant pythons had made it this far. The remaining four were severely injured, their blood staining the entire tunnel red. Filled with anger, Kong, Skylar, and the other giant beasts dragged their heavily wounded bodies through the underground tunnel towards the magical formation within the mountain. Brandon tuned the teleportation array to the same frequency, and within a minute, a strong light burst from the array, startling him. Seconds later, several giant beasts, for humans, and a large number of snakes appeared before him, instantly crowding the massive space. Chapter 99 going hunting. Brandon barely had time to marvel at the magical array's wonders before he noticed that each of the giant beasts was injured, and only four of the five giant pythons had made it. Kong's back was covered with horrific wounds, his muscles exposed and bleeding profusely, leaving him on the verge of death. Yet, he tightly clutched the dragon claw blood orchid in his hand. Of the three giant snakes that had been taught the technique, only one returned. Thankfully, Skylar was uninjured providing Brandon with a slight sense of relief. Seeing the severely wounded beasts, Brandon immediately understood what had happened. A surge of immense anger filled him, and his blood loss made him dizzy. It took him a moment to regain his composure. Ignoring his own weakness, he quickly crawled to Kong's side. A powerful flow of internal energy slowly transferred into Kong's body. Fortunately, Kong's injuries were only superficial and had not reached his vital organs. The substantial blood loss from the morning and the current wounds had caused him to fall into a coma. Under Brandon's immense energy, Kong's body began to heal rapidly. It took Brandon two hours to finish. Looking at the remaining beasts, he felt a deep sense of connection with them, having been together for so many years. The sudden death of one of the five giant pythons pained Brandon deeply. 
Having been an animal for so long, Brandon gradually started seeing himself as one too. Humans felt increasingly distant to him. The five giant pythons were like comrades and subordinates to him. Although he had varying degrees of affection for them, the snake's cold and indifferent nature made it hard for Brandon to be fond of them. In contrast, he had a deep bond with Skylar, who had been with him since childhood, and the loyal Kong. However, the Python's respect and loyalty were unwavering, and Brandon often saw their fervent gaze when they looked at him. They might not have been the best companions, but they were excellent subordinates. The fact that his subordinates were killed by humans enraged him. From being a lizard at birth to becoming a dragon, Brandon had grown from weak to strong. He had always lived cautiously, fearing predators first and later fearing discovery by humans. His previous life as a human meant that even when encountering humans, he never thought to harm them. Humans evoked a mix of familiarity and fear in him. But, he didn't harm humans, yet they relentlessly pursued him. They attempted to capture him, study his body, and ultimately even sought to kill him. Driven by greed, humans forced him to flee for his life, seeking refuge far away. His concessions ultimately led to the destruction of his own lair. A fierce anger burned within Brandon, but despite his rage, he remained rational. He was waiting, waiting to advance to the lesser heaven level. The relentless human pursuit had pushed the furious Brandon to the opposite side of humanity. One day, humans would experience the true wrath of a dragon. Among the remaining giant serpents, one had evolved from a king cobra, another from a rattlesnake, one from a python, and another from a cobra. Each of these giant serpents bore terrifying scars with scales that had been ripped apart. Their thick scales were no match for the power of missiles. They lay coiled on the ground, closing their eyes to heal. Brandon drove the remaining serpents out of the cave. After leaving the cave, the serpent swarm slithered towards the forest outside, where the environment was even more brutal. Brandon estimated that most of these serpents would become prey for the island's giant beasts. However, those that managed to survive would become incredibly powerful. The survival of the fittest here far exceeded that of the Amazon jungle. The bloody law of the jungle dictated that only the strong would survive. After the serpents left, the cave suddenly felt spacious, and the snake odor began to fade. Several humans approached to help clean up the cave. Brandon pried open the claws of the King Kong and took out the dragon claw blood orchid. Its roots were still attached to some gravel, and though it hadn't yet bloomed, Many buds had already appeared. The drooping, hard leaves looked listless, having been away from the soil for too long. He walked outside and transplanted the blood orchid to the cave entrance. The abundant spiritual energy here should be more conducive to the blood orchid's growth. The young subdragon saw Brandon approaching and quickly lowered its body to the ground. This little creature had grown significantly since Brandon first saw it. Curious. It watched as Brandon transplanted the blood orchid. The blood orchid wasn't very tall, only about six and a half feet, so Brandon had to crouch to perform the transplant. After a while, Brandon stood up, feeling dizzy and seeing stars. He dragged his body into the cave and began to cultivate. Brandon had lost so much blood that he could barely walk without staggering, and his hunger was growing more intense. In his current state, hunting was out of the question. He might pass out at the first encounter with a wild beast. He hoped that cultivating would alleviate some of his hunger. Finding a comfortable position on the ground, he closed his eyes and began to cultivate. Early the next morning, Brandon was awakened by his hunger. He shook his massive body and crawled out of the cave, feeling slightly better than the day before. At least his head wasn't spinning as much, and he had regained some strength. Skylar had already flown out to hunt, but the situation here was complicated with ferocious beasts making it difficult for Skylar to manage. The chances of obtaining food were slim. King Kong had not yet awakened, though he looked much better. Several giant serpents lay weakly on the ground, their massive blood loss and hunger making them feel like they were about to hibernate. Seeing the dire state of the giant beasts in the cave, Brandon decided to go hunting himself. The beasts were severely injured and weak. He was in the best condition among them. He walked outside the nest as the sun was rising. The bright sunlight made Brandon feel a bit dazed. Shaking his massive head, he started walking away. The morning air was especially fresh. Brandon took a deep breath, immediately feeling a bit more alert. The surrounding trees were enormous, and giant birds occasionally flew up from the treetops, their huge wings causing the branches to sway. 
Each of these giant birds was about the size of Skylar. Brandon found it strange that such large birds didn't fly to other places. At least, he had never seen such huge birds anywhere else on Earth. Chapter 100 Mammoth Giant Brandon walked forward cautiously. His body was in a weakened state, and if he encountered a powerful beast, he couldn't guarantee he could handle it easily. The trees on the island were incredibly tall, creating a spacious area underneath. With Brandon's massive 15-meter-long body, he could move freely beneath them. Five to six-meter-tall shrubs grew tenaciously under the trees, striving for the sunlight filtering through the canopy. These shrubs were so tall that, in any other place, they wouldn't be considered shrubs at all. Brandon crawled forward slowly, trying to keep his footsteps light. His eyes constantly scanned his surroundings for any movement, but apart from some inexplicable insect sounds, everything was eerily quiet. Suddenly, Brandon's keen ears picked up a sound. He stopped, turned his head, and listened carefully. There was a faint, muffled noise coming from ahead. Brandon guessed that a large beast must be in the distance. He lowered his body and crept towards the direction of the sound, step by step. Brandon had no idea how far he had crawled when the sound grew louder and the ground began to tremble slightly. He gently parted the shrubs obstructing his view. About a thousand meters ahead, a colossal creature was repeatedly ramming into a giant tree. This tree, about five or six meters in diameter, looked quite ordinary in this place. The tree's lush, dense canopy spread out like a massive green net, covering the sky for hundreds of meters. Among the thick leaves were basketball-sized fruits, pink and tantalizing. The giant beast's massive body crashed into the tree again and again, causing it to shake violently. Fruits occasionally fell from the tree, and the beast eagerly devoured them, seemingly enjoying itself immensely. This creature stood seven to eight meters tall and over ten meters long, with huge, curved tusks extending from its broad mouth. A tuft of dark brown hair adorned its head. Its cylindrical, pillar-like legs resembled four massive stone columns. The creature's body was covered in thick, rough, tan-colored skin, clearly providing excellent protection. To Brandon's astonishment, this creature was none other than a mammoth, a species long thought extinct. Moreover, it was even larger than a typical mammoth. Brandon was slightly taken aback, but his hunger quickly overrode any awe for the nearly extinct creature. The intense hunger caused his pale golden eyes to glint faintly green. He focused his mind, lowered his body, and began to approach slowly. His massive form was well concealed in the underbrush, making him almost invisible. Brandon carefully controlled his presence, inching forward cautiously to avoid alerting the giant beast. At 500 meters, then 200 meters, the mammoth seemed to sense something. It abruptly stopped ramming the tree, its fan-like ears twitching as its clumsy head turned, scanning its surroundings warily. Brandon froze, holding his breath. The mammoth looked puzzled but, evidently, it hadn't detected anything. Glancing up at the delectable fruit it was reluctant to abandon, it hesitated for a moment before resuming its assault on the tree. Brandon exhaled quietly, continuing to inch forward with even greater caution. His muscles were tense, moving incrementally. In his weakened state, he lacked the strength for a prolonged chase. His best hope was to get close enough to the prey and then launch a swift, lethal attack with his sharp teeth. In the past, at this distance, he would have already charged, his incredible speed allowing him to bring down the mammoth in seconds. But now, feeling weak and powerless, he had to rely on the hunting techniques he remembered from his time as a lizard, slowly closing in on his prey. Now only a hundred meters away, the mammoth seemed agitated, as if it sensed danger. Its massive legs were restless, stamping the ground repeatedly. There was no more time to get closer. Brandon gathered his strength, energy surging through his body, and shot out from the underbrush like an arrow, charging toward the mammoth. A hundred meters was a mere breath for a dragon. The mammoth barely had time to react before the dragon's massive form was upon it, a powerful gust of wind blowing in its face. The mammoth's pupils contracted instinctively, the approaching figure growing larger and larger in its sight. In a reflexive response to the threat, the mammoth reared up, its colossal front legs rising high as if to crush the oncoming attacker. Every creature that had previously dared to bother it had been flattened by its mighty, pillar-like legs. The mammoth had lost count of how many lives had ended beneath its immense weight. However, this time the mammoth clearly miscalculated. 
The creature charging at it was even larger than itself, with purple-golden scales that gleamed faintly in the sunlight and sharp claws that glinted menacingly. It lunged at the mammoth with terrifying speed. With a loud crash, the mammoth and the dragon collided violently. The mammoth was knocked to the ground, rolling over from the impact. Its thick, rough skin was torn open by the dragon's claws, revealing tender flesh beneath. Blood gushed from the wound in torrents. The mammoth let out a wail of pain, its expression terrified as it struggled desperately to get up. But the blood loss quickly drained its strength, making its efforts futile. Its massive legs dug several large holes in the ground as it thrashed about. Suddenly, the sky seemed to darken, and the mammoth looked up to see the giant creature's gaping maw descending upon it. A sharp pain pierced the mammoth's throat as it collapsed heavily to the ground, its eyes staring blankly at the sky. The lush leaves above, and the enticing pink fruits seemed so beautiful. After finishing off the mammoth, Brandon panted heavily. The intense effort had drained his remaining strength. He clamped his jaws tightly around the mammoth's throat, drinking deeply as the blood flowed into his mouth. The hot blood spread warmth throughout his body. Rich with energy, the blood was quickly digested and absorbed. Every part of his body, like thirsty little mouths, eagerly sucked in the nourishment. Gradually, strength began to return to Brandon. Ten minutes later, the mammoth's blood had been completely drained by Brandon, leaving the once mighty beast shriveled and dehydrated. After consuming such a large amount of blood, Brandon felt significantly better. The creatures here were different from those in other places. Their flesh and blood were rich in energy, providing powerful nourishment to his body. Chapter 101 Soul Space Brandon finished drinking the elephant's blood and stood up with his massive body. Though he was still quite hungry, he felt much better. He picked up the elephant and ran back to the nest. There were a few injured beasts in the cave, waiting for food. Returning much faster this time, Brandon made it back to the cave in less than 10 minutes. Skylar was already back, and there was a new carcass of a 5 or 6 meter long animal in the cave. This creature had a single horn on its head and was covered in scales. There was a huge blood hole in its head, likely Skylar's doing. Brandon was curious about the large blood hole in the creature's head, wondering how Skylar had killed the beast. The carcass was untouched, indicating they were waiting for him to join the feast. Kong had woken up, still looking weak, with dry lips and a pale face, he saw Brandon enter and let out a sound. He scratched his head and a mischievous smile appeared on his fierce face. For giant pythons lay coiled on the ground, like four massive mounds of flesh. They had awakened from their cultivation, their heads resting limply on the ground, appearing listless. Brandon threw the elephant's carcass to the ground with a loud thud. Using his sharp claws, he tore the elephant and the strange beast into seven pieces, each chunk weighing several tons. The giant beasts gathered around and immediately started eating. The three giant pythons swallowed the massive chunks of meat in one gulp, then coiled up again, their eyes half-closed as they began to digest. The most refined eater was undoubtedly Skylar. With his sharp beak, he elegantly pecked at the meat chunks, in stark contrast to Kong and the others' ravenous eating. In just a few minutes, Brandon and the giant beasts had devoured the entire elephant and the strange beast. Midway through eating, Brandon remembered that the humans hadn't had anything to eat yet. He looked at the humans cleaning the cave. They couldn't afford to let such cheap labor starve. Tearing off a piece of meat weighing dozens of pounds, he tossed it to them. Whether they ate it raw or cooked it was up to them, as long as it didn't interfere with their work. The food here was noticeably more plentiful compared to other places. For ordinary creatures, this amount of food wouldn't even fill Brandon's teeth. But after eating the meat and drinking the blood earlier, Brandon felt somewhat full. His body started to warm up, a weak but comfortable heat spreading from his stomach throughout his body. He yawned, feeling drowsy. He lay down, his eyelids growing heavier, and soon his thunderous snores filled the cave. As Brandon slept, he found himself in a strange space, an empty void stretching out in all directions. The entire space spanned about a hundred meters in diameter, measured by his own body size. It was a massive circular area, with its edges shrouded in thick white fog that continuously dissipated and reformed, creating a mysterious, ethereal boundary. The space was brightly lit, yet Brandon couldn't identify any source of light. Brandon floated in midair without flapping his wings, as if an invisible force held him aloft. Despite the eerie nature of this space, it felt oddly comfortable to him. 
almost like being back in his nest. This feeling was inexplicably soothing, and he sensed that he could move freely within this space. Testing this, he thought about moving without using his wings. As soon as the thought crossed his mind, his body instantly relocated to his desired position, almost like teleportation. He had a strange sense of control over everything in this space. Curious about the fog at the edge of the space, he approached it. Extending a claw, he gently touched the white mist, which seeped through his claws, with some of it seemingly absorbed by his body. This contact made him feel immensely comfortable. Suddenly, he heard faint sounds, seemingly emanating from the fog. These noises were a mix of whispers and murmurs, creating a cacophony. Amidst the noise, he could faintly discern prayers, as if someone was calling out to him. The sight of the white fog and the noise felt oddly familiar to Brandon, as if he had experienced this before. As he tried to recall these familiar scenes, he was filled with confusion. Abruptly, a sharp pain pierced his head, waking him up instantly. He opened his eyes, looking dazedly at the ground. His mind began to process the recent memories and thoughts about faith. It seemed the white fog was something significant, a manifestation of some kind of belief or power. The power of belief is a form of spiritual energy. By itself, it has no tangible effects. No matter how much belief a mortal possesses, it won't enhance their strength or extend their lifespan. An individual's belief is insignificant, but the combined belief of thousands or millions is immensely powerful. However, without a soul reaching a certain level of enlightenment, one cannot harness this power. Such individuals won't even perceive this energy, let alone absorb it. For these people, a vast amount of belief is useless. This explains why a mortal, no matter how much belief they gather, cannot become a god. A god's omnipotence, ability to create from nothing, and to realize their desires, comes from being able to condense and utilize this vast power of belief. Belief is not only the source of divine power, but also the origin of a god's existence. Brandon never expected that he, too, possessed belief. He suddenly remembered the cannibal tribe in the deep underground pit. After all that had happened, Brandon had almost forgotten about them. It seemed they truly regarded him as a god after he left. What Brandon didn't anticipate was that the majority of this belief did not come from the cannibal tribe. Instead, it came from the very people of the civilized world who he despised. The emergence of a dragon shook the entire world, leading many to worship and believe in dragons. Yet, with his current strength, he couldn't fully absorb these beliefs. The existence of this power of belief would slowly transform him over time. Although this process would take a very long time, thousands or even tens of thousands of years. Chapter 102 Hansen's Decision Brandon's soul had gradually improved in essence after absorbing a trace of divine spirit. To make a comparison, Brandon's soul was now on par with a legendary level soul in essence. However, in terms of soul quantity, he still had a long way to go. This was the reason why Brandon could occasionally enter the soul space. For cultivators below the legendary level, the soul remained an enigmatic concept. Regardless of their strength, they were ignorant of the mysteries of the soul. They only knew how to utilize mental power without understanding the wonders of the soul. Only when one's strength reached the legendary level could the energy or mental power within begin to influence the soul, leading to its evolution. Only then could cultivators start entering the soul space and uncover the secrets of the soul. Thus, five days passed. After a few heavy breaths, the room suddenly fell silent. Oh, dear. You've been so listless lately. Is something troubling you? You're not as vigorous as you used to be, the blonde woman complained with dissatisfaction, her slender fingers drawing circles on the man's strong chest. Oh, Jenny, work has been stressing me out lately. I haven't had the mood for anything else, Hansen replied, his brows furrowed, a hint of worry in his eyes. He quickly changed the subject. Well, you switched to a new lab. How is it over there? What are you working on? The blonde woman asked curiously. Oh, Jenny, that's classified information. I can't talk about it, but the benefits are quite good. Hansen rubbed his forehead, as if remembering something. Oh, right. Alice has been wanting to visit lately. Tomorrow's the weekend. Why don't you take her out? I have to work tomorrow. All right, dear. But don't overwork yourself. If it gets too exhausting, maybe we should consider switching companies. Let's give it some more time. Let's get some sleep. Okay, good night. Good night. The lights went out, but Hansen's eyes remained wide open. He stared blankly at the ceiling, continually pondering recent events. 
His expression was one of deep confusion and conflict. He glanced at his wife beside him, who was peacefully asleep, softly snoring. He gently kissed her. The experience in Serpent Valley felt like a dream. After encountering the dragon, his life began to change slowly. His body grew stronger, and his strength increased. He could effortlessly lift several hundred pounds. The great dragon was as powerful as a deity. Although he hadn't seen the dragon since Serpent Valley, it seemed to reside in his heart. Hansen felt like a devout follower, willing to do anything for the dragon. His hesitation seemed to vanish, and he made a decision in his heart. He wasn't sure when this feeling began, but he knew it was likely related to the contract with the dragon. However, he didn't resist this feeling. His sleeping wife let out a gentle snore. He looked at his beautiful wife and quietly got out of bed. He poured himself a cup of coffee. Perhaps after today, his peaceful life would be over. He might even be arrested, but for the sake of the great dragon, it was all worth it. His only concern was for his wife and daughter. He hoped they wouldn't be implicated. In a large biological laboratory somewhere in the United States, researchers were busy at work. A few researchers in white coats wheeled several carts to a massive alloy door. They skillfully entered several codes on a crystal screen, and the huge alloy door opened. Inside was a vast space with a huge, transparent glass dome in the center housing a small, ecological garden. Astonishingly, a gigantic creature nearly filled the entire garden. It was entirely green, with small red horns on its head and huge scales that shimmered like emeralds. Its body, over a meter thick, lay lazily on the ground, covered in scars. Its head hung low, but its cold eyes occasionally flickered with a fierce light. This was a giant serpent, evolved from a python. After the attack in Serpent Valley, this giant serpent was severely wounded. Its massive injuries left it near death, and it had no time to retreat to the deep pool beneath the waterfall before being captured alive by human troops. It was taken to a large laboratory and imprisoned. After many days of recuperation, most of its wounds had healed, except for a few severe injuries. The space was very cramped, making the giant serpent uncomfortable. Additionally, the top of this space often released gases that made it feel lethargic and weak. Whenever this happened, humans would enter and draw its blood. Fortunately, they didn't take much. Food was not lacking here. After many days, it felt a slight recovery in its strength. It had gradually adapted to the toxic gases from above, which were becoming less effective. However, it couldn't show this. It needed to deceive the humans. The cunning and cruelty of humans made it wary. Humans entered again signaling that it was time to eat. The staff looked at the terrifying giant serpent with fear in their eyes. The serpent's fierce gaze put a lot of pressure on them. They threw chickens into the ecological garden through a small hole in the glass. After feeding, they hurriedly left. Whether it was psychological or not, they always felt a chilling sensation and goosebumps whenever they were here. The huge alloy door closed again. The giant serpent ate the chickens one by one. These were insufficient for its massive size but humans ensured it wouldn't starve. There was a layer of transparent material outside the space, incredibly sturdy. When it first arrived, it had tried to break this material but couldn't. Although it was weak and powerless at that time, it showed that the material was not as fragile as it appeared. Additionally, it noticed that whenever it hit the transparent material, gases would be released from above. After eating, the giant serpent closed its eyes and began to meditate. It needed to gather every bit of its strength to escape. It wondered if Wong was doing well now, and whether its companions had managed to escape. Chapter 103 The Giant Jiao's Revenge At that moment, the alloy door reopened, and a staff member sneaked in. He seemed very cautious as he walked to the glass enclosure, and carefully entered a few passwords. The entire glass enclosure instantly opened. The Giant Jiao recognized this person. He was a slave of the king, one of their own. The giant Zhao nodded at him, and its icy gaze softened. It slowly straightened its body, casting a massive shadow across the space. Without any hesitation, the giant Zhao swiftly swam out of the alloy door, heading outside. The laboratory was enormous, and the giant Zhao's massive body moved quickly, with the scales on its belly paddling like tiny feet, propelling it rapidly like a high-speed train. The humans in the corridors only felt a gust of wind before everything went dark before their eyes. Anyone spotted by the giant Jiao was swallowed whole. In less than a minute, over a dozen humans had vanished from the earth. To the giant Jiao, those few people were merely appetizers. 
It wasn't even close to being full. The immense hatred it harbored for humans made its eyes even colder. Suddenly, alarms blared throughout the lab, and several armed humans charged at it. A flicker of fear flashed in the giant Xiao's eyes, as it vividly remembered the formidable power of human weapons. But its worry quickly dissipated when it realized the humans hadn't deployed those powerful weapons. The small arms they used only produced a few sparks upon hitting its body, causing no real harm. The giant Xiao swam rapidly, and the humans screamed in terror, turning to flee. But their speed was no match for the giant Xiao. With a gust of wind behind them, they hadn't taken more than a few steps before all of them were swallowed by the giant Xiao. In less than 10 minutes, the hundred or so people in the entire lab were slaughtered by the giant Xiao, all swallowed whole. This laboratory was built in a remote area, surrounded by desolation. Not far from the lab stood a tall mountain, lush with trees. After leaving the lab, the giant Xiao began to climb the mountain. It needed to leave quickly or risk danger. The giant Xiao's belly was noticeably larger, having swallowed over a hundred humans, which was a lot even for its enormous size. Its stomach kept churning, its powerful digestive abilities converting the food into energy more quickly. However, it now needed to find a safe place to hide and digest its meal. Although the Jiao had evolved from a snake and was no longer the same species, it still retained some snake-like characteristics. For instance, after a big meal, its whole body would become lethargic and reluctant to move. The giant Jiao was in this state now, needing a secure spot to digest its food and get some rest. The giant Jiao swiftly moved through the forest. Compared to the Amazon rainforest, the trees here were much sparser, shorter, and mostly coniferous. Its massive body couldn't be well concealed under these trees. As it moved rapidly, a fishy wind blew through the air. After swimming for nearly half an hour, not knowing how many hills it had crossed, it finally stopped in a secluded mountain ravine. The area was very dark, with almost no sunlight reaching it. A two-meter-wide stream flowed through the ravine from upstream. The rocky cliffs on either side were jagged and steep, with little vegetation except for a few tenacious small trees. Various sized caves dotted the cliffs, forming a typical karst landscape, making it an excellent hiding place. The giant Jiao began to climb the cliff, its belly scales gripping the rocks tightly, while its powerful muscles contracted rhythmically. The massive body started to move upward in a serpentine manner. The nearly vertical cliff felt like flat ground to the Jiao. After just a few strides, it had entered one of the caves. This cave was over three meters wide, with an unknown depth. The giant Jiao's massive body began to swim inward. The narrow entrance soon opened into a spacious interior. Before long, it reached a vast chamber, where the colorful stalactites illuminated the cave with a mesmerizing array of colors. The entire hall was connected to many other caves, with unknown destinations, but it was clear that the labyrinthine passages would make it easy for the giant Jiao to escape if humans came after it. Satisfied with this place, the giant Jiao felt increasingly drowsy and found a random spot to sleep. It didn't know how long it had slept when it suddenly awoke to the roar of helicopter blades. Humans must be hunting for it. The giant Jiao stayed motionless in the cave. While human weapons were powerful, their bodies were extremely frail, making direct confrontation unwise. The food in its stomach was fully digested, as its powerful digestive system could even break down hard bones. After this meal, the giant Jiao felt its strength gradually returning. The energy within its body began to flow more actively. The severe wound that nearly severed it was slowly healing, and the shattered scales were regrowing. However, having just been full the previous day, it was now hungry again. It needed more food. After a while, the sound of the helicopters overhead slowly faded, but the giant Jiao remained cautious. It waited until there was no sound around before slowly crawling out. It found that the forest here could not compare to the one in its homeland. The wildlife was sparse and very small, and it hadn't encountered any food substantial enough to satisfy its hunger. But to its delight, there were many humans in the area. Its massive body coiled on the steep rock wall, and its keen eyes could clearly see many humans moving about on the hillsides. Its cold eyes gleamed with a murderous light, as its hatred for humans was deeply ingrained in its very bones. It began to move, swimming towards the direction of the humans. Chapter 104 The Thirst for Power On a flat area, halfway up a small hill, seven or eight young men and women were gathered on a carpet, having a picnic. The carpet was laden with food, 
and a radio on the ground played a beautiful melody. The young people chatted as they ate. Oh, we finally shook those people off. This place was off limits. If we hadn't taken a big detour, today's party would have been ruined. Yeah, I heard a monster escape from the lab and still hasn't been caught. Oh, don't believe their stories. Those soldiers must have a secret operation. Do you believe it? They always use that excuse. One guy said mysteriously, Maybe there really is a monster, haha. But don't you think it makes our gathering more exciting, ha ha ha? The giant Jiao moved swiftly, getting closer to the group of humans within minutes. Oh my god, what was that? I just saw a shadow flash through the distant woods. There's nothing there. You must be seeing things. Ah. Uh. Before he could finish his sentence, a massive, blood-red mouth lunged at him. His vision went black, and he lost consciousness. In less than a minute, the giant Jiao had swallowed all the humans. However, the seven or eight people were far from enough for it. It needed more food. Its cold, merciless eyes scanned the area. It turned and began to crawl down the mountain. The Jiao moved through the forest like a storm, soon spotting a group of armed humans guarding the base of the hill. It quickly stopped, its eyes filled with a fierce glow as it assessed them. They wore uniform outfits with camouflaged helmets and carried a variety of weapons, none of which could harm the Jiao. It hesitated for a moment before turning back toward its lair. It understood that if it wiped out these people, its presence would be exposed, leading to more pursuers. Now was not the time for hunting. The humans were waiting for it to walk into their trap. As night gradually fell, the giant Jiao began moving again, heading down the mountain. It noticed that the soldiers had left, leaving the area surrounded by some yellow tape, which was no barrier for the Jiao. It quickly broke through the fence and swam towards the plains. Within minutes, it saw a brightly lit area ahead. This must be a human settlement. Its eyes gleamed with malice, and its enormous body swiftly headed towards the village. Several days had passed. During this time, Brandon's depleted energy had gradually recovered, filling his body with strength once again. The few giant beasts, including King Kong, no longer needed to hunt for themselves. The island's creatures, with their energy-rich flesh, helped them recover quickly. In just a few days, they were back to their vigorous selves. The spiritual energy in this area was abundant, and the speed of cultivation was far faster than in Snake Valley. After many days of recuperation and training, the few giant pythons had reached the peak of the third level in their fighting chi, just a step away from reaching the earth level. However, despite their strength, the giant beasts were not invincible on the island. Brandon had seen several instances where King Kong and the giant pythons returned with wounds, empty-handed. Although the giant beasts here did not know the methods of cultivation, their prolonged exposure to an energy-rich environment had led to generations of evolution. Their physical strength had greatly increased, and their flesh was filled with energy. Brandon believed that if the island's giant beasts could cultivate, they would easily reach the earth level by harnessing their abundant internal energy. As a result, King Kong and the other giant beasts trained even more diligently, showing noticeably more vitality than they had in Snake Valley. It was clear that this environment was more suitable for their lives. Outside the cave, the blood orchid, which had been wilting for a few days, regained its vitality. The abundant spiritual energy caused it to grow rapidly, slowly sprouting new shoots. The blood orchid's growth was very slow. This particular orchid had been around for an unknown number of years. Brandon learned from an ancient scroll he got from a human that these blood orchids were at least a thousand years old. Despite so many years of growth, it had only reached about three meters in length. While in Snake Valley, Brandon had never seen it sprout new shoots. Surprisingly, after being transplanted here, the blood orchid began to thrive. Brandon was hopeful that in such a spiritually rich environment, the blood orchid might undergo further evolution and become a true treasure of nature. Since entering that soul space last time, Brandon hadn't been able to go back. Despite his attempts, he couldn't figure it out. He realized that his current strength was still far from reaching that level. The previous entry was just a fluke. However, from the sudden memories that surfaced, Brandon noticed that faith was incredibly important for him. Even without reaching legendary strength, faith was still highly useful. Adequate faith could slowly transform both the body and soul, making it easier to achieve legendary power. However, this transformation would take a very long time, at least a thousand years. But as a dragon, living for thousands of years wasn't an issue for him. It seemed he needed to pay more attention to the cannibals in the future, as they were a source of his faith. 
If he could cooperate with the church, it would be even better. From the underwater red dragon, Brandon learned that ever since the gods' war, the gods disappeared and no divine miracles had occurred since. Various signs indicated that the gods had either fallen or were in a deep slumber somewhere. Although the church had limited power, its influence was immense, with billions of followers worldwide. The enormous faith generated by these followers was being wasted. If Brandon could join the church, he could certainly benefit from this vast reservoir of faith. However, after some thought, he gave up on the idea. Being globally wanted, it was unlikely that the Pope would cooperate with him unless he was a fool. Everything required strength. In the eyes of humans, he was just an outcast. Without intimidating power, he would only be hunted. Right now, he was like the fabled flesh of Tang Monk, with everyone eager to drink his blood and eat his flesh. Thinking about this ignited a fury within him, and sparks began to fly from his nostrils. Brandon shook his massive body and got up from the ground. He couldn't afford to be lazy anymore. If he didn't want to be beaten by humans and have his lair destroyed like last time, he had to train diligently. The dignity of a dragon was not to be trampled on. Perhaps he was the most embarrassed dragon in history. Brandon mocked himself, shook his head, and walked out of his lair toward the volcano. Chapter 105 Future Super Beast Brandon leapt lightly into the air, spreading his wings with a swift swoosh and flying towards the volcano. In just a few minutes, he arrived at the crater. A giant beast, resembling a chilin, emerged from the lava upon hearing the commotion. It had been nearly two months since their last fight, and the wounds on its body had healed completely. The chilin looked vibrant and energetic, clearly having recovered well. Upon seeing the dragon, the chilin hesitated for a moment, retracting its head, but quickly resurfaced. The chilin sized up the dragon, comparing themselves. The dragon's body had grown larger and its aura had become much stronger. The Chilin's newfound confidence, stemming from its recovery, immediately diminished. It slowly crawled up to the volcano's rim and cautiously approached Brandon. As it neared, Brandon felt the intense heat of the magma. He began to feel a bit tense and was about to attack when he noticed the Chilin slightly bowing its head. Brandon was taken aback. This was a gesture of respect from an intelligent creature to a stronger being. Brandon exhaled in relief. He had experienced the terrifying power of the Chilin's flames before. If it were to attack with its flames up close, Brandon wasn't sure if his body could withstand it. The Chilin's blinding white flames still gave him chills. If the Chilin's flames weren't limited in use, Brandon would have lost their previous battle. Brandon subtly stepped aside. His victory in that fight had been a stroke of luck and he wasn't confident he could win in another encounter. After chatting with the Chilin for a while, Brandon noticed a newfound respect from it. Thinking it over, he realized that in the animal world, things were straightforward. Survival of the fittest and submission to the strong. Brandon had defeated the Chilin, but didn't kill it. Instead, they shared the same territory. The Chilin, having recovered from its injuries, wanted to challenge him again but found that Brandon had grown even stronger in a short period. Its confidence was utterly shattered. Although Brandon hadn't forced the Chilin to submit, the rules of the animal world dictated that submission to a stronger being was natural. As Brandon's power grew, the Chilin began to align itself with him. Brandon wasn't entirely sure if this creature was a true Chilin, but he was certain it had noble blood and was, in a way, on par with him. The prospect of having such a powerful being submit to him brought Brandon both excitement and pressure. However, since this creature resembles a Chilin so much, it must have Chilin blood. That's a noble divine beast. Although I am a dragon, also considered a divine beast, that's from Western mythology. The Chilin is an auspicious beast, a symbol of good fortune. Brandon remembered that during the Chinese New Year, they used to paste New Year pictures of Chilins on their doors. He never expected that he would have a Chilin as a subordinate in the future. After chatting with the Chilin for a while, Brandon headed toward the volcano's crater. The magma in the crater churned like thick porridge, and the intense geothermal energy made the energy within Brandon's body circulate automatically. He took a deep breath and, with a massive splash, jumped into the crater. The Chilin followed him in. The scorching magma enveloped his entire body as Brandon quickly sank deeper. His body, having advanced, was significantly more heat resistant than before. The surrounding magma only accelerated the flow of energy within him without causing any discomfort. In fact, it made him feel completely at ease. As he gradually descended, the temperature started to rise, 
and Brandon began to feel the heat more intensely. He found the red rock he had used for training last time. It was unchanged since his previous visit. Brandon lay on it and began to train. The dense geothermal energy didn't require any effort from Brandon to absorb. It surged into his body frantically, and his internal energy rapidly moved, absorbing the geothermal energy. As he absorbed a large amount of fire elements, Brandon's body underwent further changes, the most noticeable being an increased resistance to fire. Ordinarily, a dragon's attributes are hard to change once determined. A dragon's body attributes are set from birth. Only some miraculous elixirs can forcibly change a dragon's body and adjust its bloodline, making such changes typically very difficult. However, Brandon wasn't originally a dragon. He was just a lizard who purified his bloodline through the Golden Bell technique. Additionally, by chance, he obtained a dragon crystal and consumed a blood orchid. A series of factors, full of great randomness and coincidence, led to his evolution into a dragon. Although his body transformed into a dragon, there were still many extraneous genes within him. The dominance of the dragon genes hadn't truly solidified, and his body's development potential hadn't been clearly established. His genes hadn't fully stabilized. Inside his body, there were both earth dragon genes and fire dragon genes. Due to his cultivation with the golden bell, the earth attribute initially held a slight advantage. However, after being immersed in the underwater magma, the intense fire element supplemented the fire attribute genes in his body, causing them to rapidly proliferate until they equaled the earth attribute. Through this extraordinary encounter, Brandon eventually became a dual earth fire dragon. Even now, Brandon's dragon form is somewhat lacking, primarily due to the impurity of his bloodline. There are too many extraneous genes in his body. These genes subtly diminish his overall physical qualities compared to a normal dragon. Although the Golden Bell technique can continuously purify his bloodline, the time has been too short. He still has some distance to go before matching a true dragon's bloodline. In essence, Brandon's bloodline is a hodgepodge of various genes, high-level, low-level, dragon, lizard, and possibly other higher beings. However, this mix isn't without its benefits. For instance, in critical moments, Brandon can emit blood-red flames that burn souls, a trait from some unknown higher existence's bloodline. But with Brandon's current strength, it's difficult to control this ability freely. Brandon's body is full of uncertainties. Perhaps once all his genes fuse, a great divine beast will be born. But that is a far-off future. Chapter 106 A Year of Training A year had passed, and Brandon had been training daily within the volcano. For a fire attribute dragon, the intense heat of the volcanic lava was the perfect training ground. Brandon felt his strength improving each day within the volcano. The energy within him was rapidly increasing, becoming thicker and more viscous. What once flowed like clear water now coursed through his body like a thick porridge. Brandon's resistance to high temperatures had also significantly increased. He could now dive a hundred meters into the molten lava, where the lava was beginning to turn yellow. However, he still hadn't discovered where the Chilin was training. Over the past year, Brandon had only seen it a few times. For the Chilin, the lava was its domain, and it rarely emerged from the volcano unless necessary. Despite the continuous increase in energy within his body, Brandon had not yet felt on the verge of a breakthrough. His body seemed like a bottomless pit, endlessly absorbing the vast geothermal energy, but there were no signs of forming a dragon crystal. From the inherited memories, he knew that the lesser heaven level was a critical hurdle. Most creatures remained stuck at the peak of the earth level, unable to advance further. The energy required for this breakthrough was exponentially greater than the previous levels. Although the earth level and the lesser heaven level were just one rank apart, the gap was as vast as the sky and the earth. Without reaching the lesser heaven level, one couldn't grasp its wonders. Once a creature advanced to the lesser heaven level, it would break through its biological limits, undergoing physical evolution and significantly extending its lifespan. Flight would no longer be exclusive to birds. A creature at this level could fly freely in the sky, no longer bound by earthly constraints. Although a lesser heaven level being could only fly at low altitudes and not beyond the atmosphere, it was still a tremendous improvement. Moreover, upon reaching the lesser heaven level, an energy crystal core would form within the body. For spellcasters, this would allow for much quicker spellcasting with some low-level magic becoming instantaneous. For dragons, the lesser heaven level marked adulthood for most. If a dragon reached this level, it was considered to have reached maturity, 
Only dragons with noble and pure bloodlines would possess great heaven level power upon reaching adulthood. Therefore, for dragons, the lesser heaven level was a necessary phase in life. Achieving this level was almost certain unless a dragon suffered severe injuries or died young. Brandon, while not expecting his bloodline to be noble and pure, believed that being recognized by the old red dragon meant he had the typical dragon bloodline. Thus, he wasn't worried. His training was steady and methodical, aligning perfectly with the calm and unhurried mindset essential for cultivation. Non-action didn't mean inaction. It was simply a mindset of tranquility and not being attached to gains and losses. After a year of training, Brandon descended from the volcano. Although he hadn't yet reached the lesser heaven level, his strength had more than doubled. His body had grown from 15 meters to 17 meters. His once fresh and tender purple gold scales, now tempered by long immersion in lava, had taken on a time-worn and ancient appearance. The basketball-sized scales were adorned with intricate, clear patterns, giving his entire body a mesmerizing and intense look. Brandon spread his wings and flew towards his nest. Within minutes, he arrived at what used to be a sub-dragon's nest, but had now become a full-fledged dragon's lair. He retracted his wings and descended. The young sub-dragon was lying at the entrance of the lair. A year ago, Brandon had taught the sub-dragon the dragon's training methods. After six months of training, the sub-dragon's strength had advanced rapidly, reaching the earth level. It had grown to about 8 meters in length and exuded a faint dragon's aura. Moreover, after consuming the blood orchid, the sub-dragon's body had begun to mutate. The most noticeable change was the growth of two fleshy bulges on its sides, and its scales started to turn green. Brandon estimated that it wouldn't be long before the sub-dragon grew two pairs of wings. According to the dragon's inherited memories, the sub-dragon seemed to be evolving into a flying dragon. Although it wasn't transforming into a full dragon, which was a bit disappointing to Brandon, the flying dragon's dragon bloodline was much purer than that of an earth dragon. The sub-dragon was exceptionally respectful towards Brandon. It slept outside the lair every night, seemingly standing guard for Brandon. Whenever it saw Brandon, it would respectfully lie on the ground, which Brandon found quite troublesome, despite his many attempts to stop it. Brandon's massive body entered the lair, where the beasts, including Kong, were absent. Since Brandon had been diligently training at the volcano's rim every day, often for several days at a time, the task of hunting had gradually fallen to them, which they seemed to enjoy. Although the jungle was dangerous, it was also full of challenges and fun. They often returned covered in scars, but fortunately, there were no casualties. A few humans were grilling meat in the cave. Huge chunks of meat were roasting over the fire, the enticing fat dripping onto the flames and occasionally sparking bursts of fire. When the four humans saw Brandon enter, they quickly bowed in respect, their eyes filled with admiration and fervor. Brandon nodded at them. Three of these humans had already broken through to the earth level, and even Angela, the weakest, had reached the peak of the human level, just a step away from breaking through. With the abundant spiritual energy and the daily consumption of energy-rich meat, it was hard not to progress in strength. Moreover, over the year, Angela had developed even further. Her old clothes had long since fallen apart, and the leaf-made garments she now wore barely covered her. To Brandon's keen eyesight, almost like a high-power telescope, it seemed as though Angela was not wearing anything at all, making her feel uncomfortable under his gaze. Although the significant size difference meant Brandon couldn't do anything inappropriate, Having a woman on the island brought some variety and entertainment to his otherwise monotonous life, providing a pleasant sight. Brandon ate a few pieces of roasted meat. Although he hadn't eaten in a week, he didn't feel hungry. He was eating purely for the enjoyment of the food. Wherever there are humans, there will be various delicacies. Humans always find ways to discover edible things. After comparing, Brandon found that humans were far better at roasting meat than he was. They would meticulously find various seasonings in the jungle and cook with care. After tasting the food prepared by humans, Brandon was too lazy to cook for himself anymore. Chapter 107 Nightmare Descends A year might not be a long time, but a lot can happen within it. For many Americans, this past year has been particularly difficult, marked as a year shrouded in nightmares. Rumors of a demon descending upon America started to circulate. Despite the authorities' best efforts to conceal the truth, a series of village massacres left them increasingly on the defensive. In California, fear spread rapidly. Many people began moving in mass, 
especially those living in the suburbs, as living in such areas offered no sense of security. Although the government deployed a large number of troops to hunt down the threat, their efforts were ultimately fruitless. They failed to achieve any significant results. Whenever they spotted the giant serpent, it would vanish quickly into the dense forests. Technology seemed powerless in such a vast and wild landscape. The serpent was extremely fast, often disappearing before armed helicopters could even take off. Days later, the serpent would reappear in a different area. They discovered that the serpent's territory spanned tens of thousands of square kilometers. Its appetite was growing. Each feeding left hundreds of people missing, turning entire villages into ghost towns. Those who remained would often flee the next day in a panic. Fortunately for the authorities, the serpent's feedings were not very frequent, occurring roughly once every two weeks with a predictable pattern. After each feeding, the serpent would go into hiding, giving the military ample time to prepare traps and conduct capture operations. This also provided the authorities with enough time to dispel rumors and calm the public. To their astonishment, the serpent proved to be incredibly intelligent and cunning, never falling for the same trick twice. On one occasion, the military placed a large amount of beef in an open field, dousing the area with cow blood to create a strong scent. They waited for two hours before a massive serpent came speeding towards them from afar, kicking up clouds of dust. Its speed made it hard for weapons to lock on. As the serpent approached, it suddenly stopped, raising its massive head to survey the surroundings. Its scarlet tongue flickered in and out, but unlike a typical snake's forked tongue, this one was round and covered in barbs. The serpent's large, emerald green scales gleamed like jade in the sunlight, with large drops of saliva continuously dripping from its gaping mouth giving it a menacing appearance. A soldier, hiding nervously in a trench, accidentally pulled the trigger in his anxiety, launching a grenade. The serpent's pupils contracted, its tail whipped violently, and it sped away, leaving only afterimages. The grenade exploded over a kilometer behind the serpent, which had already moved out of range. Within moments, it disappeared into the mountains, leaving no trace. After this incident, the serpent no longer fell for such rudimentary traps. Its movements became increasingly unpredictable, and its range of activity expanded significantly. Though satellites have advanced to the point of centimeter-level precision, they can only track specific objects. A giant serpent can easily evade detection by slipping into the mountains and reappearing elsewhere, making it extremely difficult to locate. Additionally, satellite tracking has many limitations, such as being highly dependent on weather conditions. The serpent's nocturnal activity further complicates efforts to capture it. The White House. The president sat at his enormous desk, brows furrowed. In just one year, he had visibly aged. The immense pressure had led to his recent bouts of insomnia. The serpent's escape was a catastrophe for the United States, far more severe than the previous dragon attack. The economic damage it caused was incomparable to the destruction of a small, insignificant city. All of California was gripped by fear with large populations relocating to other states. Factories shut down, lands lay barren, and unemployment soared, especially in the hardest-hit areas, which had become almost deserted. For those unable to leave, faith in God became their only solace. Oh, and that cursed dragon. Several neighboring villages had suffered attacks, except for one, which remained untouched due to a large dragon statue at its entrance. A farmer in that village, a fervent dragon believer, had funded the statue's construction. He believed that no matter how powerful the demon was, it couldn't surpass the dragon. Since the dragon was real, it was more reliable than a distant deity. He trusted that the demon would be scared away at the sight of the dragon. After this incident, many other villages followed suit. They noticed that since erecting dragon statues, no attacks had occurred in those areas. Consequently, many residents began to worship the dragon. Thinking of this, the president couldn't help but smile bitterly. The serpent was, after all, the dragon's subordinate. Of course, it wouldn't attack upon seeing a dragon statue. But how could this be explained to the public? To admit that the military had invaded the dragon's lair, captured the demon, and then accidentally let it escape? He would likely be ousted by an enraged public before he could finish his explanation. His approval rating was already plummeting. Rubbing his furrowed brow, the president realized the next election was approaching. It was time to take action. A gentle knock on the door interrupted his thoughts. Come in, the president rasped. A middle-aged man entered, carrying a folder. John, still no news on the serpent? None yet, 
Mr. President, you haven't taken a break this year. Maybe you should take some time off. You haven't rested in days, the man suggested with concern. No need. The president waved dismissively. Notify the generals of all military districts about a video conference at 2 p.m. Yes, sir, the man quietly left, closing the door softly behind him, and the office fell silent once more. Chapter 108 The Arm of God Brandon had barely taken a few bites of roasted meat when the beasts returned. Ever since their solo hunts had often resulted in serious injuries, they had been hunting together which proved to be very effective. The chances of them getting injured were significantly reduced, and the combined strength of the six beasts allowed them to handle even formidable predators. Their hunting party had become one of the most powerful forces in the entire forest. However, this time, Brandon noticed that they came back empty-handed. King Kong and the giant serpents were covered in wounds, looking extremely battered. A chunk of flesh from King Kong's left arm was missing, its origin unknown, and blood was continuously dripping from his body. He grimaced in pain with every step. The giant serpent's scales were scattered, and one of the black serpents had a small horn broken off. The broken horn's smooth surface indicated it was sliced by something sharp. The serpent's bodies were marked with long, deep wounds, as if slashed by massive claws. Only Skylar, flying above, appeared unscathed. Over the past year of training, these serpents had all reached the earth level in strength growing significantly larger. The once inch-long small horns had now extended over a foot, becoming incredibly tough. The enemy they faced this time was strong enough to break a serpent's horn, showcasing the tremendous power of the beast they encountered. King Kong had grown to a height of 12 meters, his strength surpassing what it was when they first arrived on the island. His fighting chi had advanced to the sixth level, and without using magic, he could even put up a fight against Brandon. Additionally, since reaching the earth level, three of the giant beasts had awakened their innate magic abilities. King Kong could now emit a terrifying yellow energy blast from his mouth, so powerful that even Brandon wouldn't dare to withstand it head-on. The blast had a diameter of 2 meters, and Brandon had witnessed it create a 30-meter-wide crater in the ground during one of King Kong's experiments. Among the four giant serpents, the black one could spit fireballs. Although the temperature couldn't compare to Brandon's dragon breath, it was a long-range attack similar to the fireball spell but much more potent. The emerald green serpent could spray corrosive acid. A small amount of this acid could rapidly corrode flesh, causing severe decay. Although its effect on metal hadn't been tested, Brandon estimated that this ability would be a nightmare for any metallic object. The other beasts, including Skylar, had not yet awakened their abilities, but it seemed it would not be long. Brandon couldn't help but take a deep breath at this realization. Even fighting these beasts individually would be extremely challenging for him, and a single mistake could lead to his downfall. Their power now rivaled his own. A thrill of excitement surged through Brandon. The long period of training had made his bones feel rusty, and the lack of combat and injury had slowed the progress of his golden bell technique. As his physical strength and power grew, he struggled to find effective training methods aside from using gravity spells on himself. Moreover, Brandon noticed that every time he got injured, his physical strength would significantly increase, and his golden bell technique would make rapid progress for a period. He asked King Kong for a detailed account of what had happened and where it occurred. Unfortunately, even King Kong couldn't clearly describe what it was. He only knew that the creature moved very quickly, coming and going like the wind. If it weren't for their numbers, the creature wouldn't have dared to fight to the death, and the beasts would have suffered casualties. After listening to King Kong's description, Brandon's expression turned serious. This creature was obviously not simple. It possessed immense strength and speed. However, with his wings, even if he couldn't win the fight, he could always escape. Brandon instructed the beasts to rest and heal in the cave while he climbed out and headed outside. According to King Kong's description, the creature was on the other side of the island. To reach it, Brandon would have to cross the entire island a distance he was not keen on walking. With a leap into the air, he spread his wings and flew. Since humans were unlikely to monitor this area, he felt safe as long as he didn't fly too high. From the sky, Brandon closely observed the island. It was very narrow and long, resembling an arm. The more he looked, the more the island looked like an arm. At the island's tip, five narrow land strips resembled five fingers, and the entire island had a V-shape like a bent arm. This discovery startled Brandon, but he quickly dismissed it as mere coincidence. After all, 
He had heard of people seeing landmasses that looked like faces from satellites. Yet, the more he thought about it, the more curious he became. Brandon's curiosity grew as he flew faster. This place's strangeness, with its abundant natural energy, prehistoric creatures, magnetic disturbances, odd weather phenomena, and mysterious whirlpools, was baffling. His flight was swift, covering several kilometers with each flap of his nearly 50-meter wingspan. Within minutes, he arrived at his destination, the elbow of the arm-shaped island, right in the middle of the V. He slightly retracted his wings and began to dive down. His massive body crashed through dense branches and landed heavily on the island. Brandon shook his enormous body, dislodging dust and leaves, and began crawling forward. Before long, his keen eyes spotted the battlefield. The scene was chaotic, with several massive trees broken in half by immense force, and the ground was littered with craters as if bombarded. The creature was nowhere in sight. Brandon slowed his pace, crawling cautiously. The creature had to be nearby, possibly with its lair here. He cast a lightning spell on himself, making his body much lighter. This was the only wind spell he knew. Fighting an agile creature required flexibility. Otherwise, he would just be a stationary target. The further he moved, the sparser the trees became, but they grew taller. He saw several trees with trunks seven to eight meters thick. Not far from the forest, there was a massive fissure. As he approached, the gap widened, and he realized it was at the elbow of the arm-shaped island. The fissure resembled the crease between an upper and lower arm. Looking at the fissure, Brandon felt a chill run down his spine. It was just too similar. He was stunned by his realization. Standing in front of the fissure, he felt cold air emanating from it accompanied by the faint sound of howling wind from within. Chapter 109. The Cyan Beast. At that moment, a powerful aura emanated from the fissure, and Brandon felt a sense of impending danger. Suddenly, his heart skipped a beat, and he swiftly moved to the side. A shadowy figure brushed past him, its claws scraping against his thick scales, sparking a trail of fire. Despite his formidable defense, a few fine cracks appeared on his scales. Pain shot through Brandon's body as he rapidly retreated, shocked by the creature's speed. If it weren't for his strong defense, that attack would have severely injured him. The creature moved rapidly, creating afterimages as it approached Brandon. Its high-speed movement seemed to encounter no air resistance, producing no sound. The beast was so fast that Brandon couldn't clearly discern its appearance. It was a cyan-colored giant, about seven to eight meters long with a very light and agile body. Sparks flew again as the creature struck Brandon. He barely managed to raise his claws in defense. Slowly retreating, Brandon's massive tail waved through the air, searching for an opportunity to counterattack. The creature showed no intention of backing down, running rapidly and leaving a trail of afterimages as it pressed toward Brandon. His claws swung and his tail lashed out, but he couldn't land a single hit on the beast. On the contrary, Sparks continued to fly from Brandon's body. Despite his strong defense, the pain was intense, and his scales began to crack, with thin streams of blood trickling down. This one-sided battle, where he could only endure hits without countering, frustrated Brandon immensely. As Brandon fought and retreated, blood kept flowing from his wounds. His attempts to strike back were futile, as he couldn't even touch his opponent. The pain grew more intense, and broken scales fell to the ground with dull thuds. The excruciating pain sharpened Brandon's focus. He fixed his gaze on the creature, gradually abandoning his full-body defense. Instead, he only protected critical areas with his claws. Seeing Brandon seemingly give up resisting its attacks, the creature assumed he had lost hope due to its overwhelming speed. It let out a triumphant screech and attacked even more frequently. However, it was puzzled by the hardness of Brandon's body as even its sharp claws could only scratch the surface. Sparks continued to light up Brandon's body, with his wounds increasing in number. Most of his scales began to shatter, peeling off like broken glass and leaving his flesh exposed and bloodied. The injuries on Brandon's body caused his golden bell shield technique to circulate faster and faster, making his inner power more active. Gradually, his inner power formed a faint golden film over his body. Instead of slowing down, his inner power accelerated, surging through his meridians like a rampaging wild horse. It suddenly took a path it had never traveled before, making the golden film on his body thicker, almost solid. 
and seemingly gaining a reflective quality. The creature's attacks slowed down noticeably after the formation of the golden film. It found it increasingly difficult to harm Brandon, and the strong rebound effect made it hard to control its movements with each strike. The creature started to pause momentarily. Unaware of the changes in his golden bell technique, Brandon focused intently on the creature, analyzing its movement patterns. Over time, he entered a unique state where he could predict the creature's next moves. By observing the swing of its tail, the motion of its head, and the twitching of its muscles, Brandon could accurately forecast its attack direction. Though this was just a vague intuition, Brandon found it to be highly reliable, almost always predicting the attacks correctly. At one point, the creature paused in midair. Brandon snapped out of his unique state and swung his massive tail at the creature. The sheer power of his tail produced a terrifying howl as it cut through the air, sending a fierce gust of wind ahead of it. The violent wind lifted the creature's fur, making each strand stand on end. The creature let out a sharp screech, seemingly using the wind to its advantage, and twisted its body in an eerie, lightning-fast maneuver, creating an afterimage in the air. It appeared to teleport to a nearby clearing. Brandon's tail smashed through the afterimage and hit the ground with tremendous force, shaking the earth and producing a deafening crash. Debris flew everywhere, as if the area had been bombarded. As the dust settled, a deep crater emerged on the ground. The creature stood in the clearing, no longer attacking. Its round eyes were filled with fear, and it panted heavily, clearly terrified by the recent events. Brandon finally got a good look at the creature. It was covered in long, cyan fur, which seemed very soft and fluttered gently in the breeze. It was about seven to eight meters long, with a narrow body and a fox-like head that looked particularly cunning. Most striking were its four strong legs, covered in dense cyan scales, with claws over half a meter long that gleamed with a cold blue light, looking exceptionally sharp like daggers. The creature curiously eyed Brandon, but didn't dare approach. It bared its sharp teeth at Brandon, letting out a piercing cry, seemingly issuing a warning. Before Brandon could react, it dashed toward the fissure, disappearing in a few swift bounds. Brandon couldn't do anything about the creature's incredible speed. He shook his head, feeling frustrated by the battle with such an agile opponent. It was then that he noticed the changes in his own body. A layer of what seemed to be a solid golden film now covered him, with mysterious symbols rapidly flowing across its surface, constantly appearing and disappearing. 